All right, guys, we're live. Welcome back for number 10, and I'm beyond stoked to be joined by two complete legends of the industry, Dave and Bruce. Me, maybe Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, guys? <laughs> Good. Good. How are you guys? We are great. <laughs> I thought. How, cold, I how cold is it in Michigan? It's like 58 today. Oh, that's not bad. And it's going to be probably 30 tomorrow. Oh, okay. and then we'll all get sick, and you know the usual. Yes. And then it'll snow Saturday, and but it, you know that yeah, that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Cha so chaotic. It, yeah. So is it winter in Australia? Or are we actually opposite? We we are complete opposite. So the yeah. seasonal change is almost, I you know, it effectively mirrors it, right? So we are into summer. No kidding. And our weird. summer kind of goes, you know, well, we're, we're technically still in spring, I guess, but it's summer is like, you know, December to through to end of February. Wow. Um, but so it's we're tomorrow starting for him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and it's Friday today. <laughs> <laughs> it's <not. laughs> weird. But yeah, like it's, it's heading into what they are forecasting to be a very hot summer. Um, which we haven't had, like we haven't had a really hot summer for a while. Like, I mean, it gets warm. You know, don't get me wrong. I couldn't tell you. Well, I guess here we probably get as hot as 100 Fahrenheit, if I can do that translation. Obviously, we do Celsius, so I'm not yeah. – when you say 68 or whatever, I'm sitting there going, oh, what, what's that? <laughs> Normal hot out, summer. But... <laughs> so, cool. so um, but, yeah, so there's a lot of – there's a, a lot of concern about the potential for bushfires this year. So Ooh. hopefully, hopefully it's not bad, but we'll see. Right. I, thought, I thought we're the only one that burns down. No, no, I should know. We, <laughs> it's bad here. It can get really bad, as you probably know. I thought this was funny. I'm going to hit this hit this comment straight up. Um, this one should be great. My two favorite builders. So the question is, who, who which two? <laughs> There's three here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> Someone's missing out on this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Good assuming question. it's. I'm assuming it's me. Um, uh, no. <laughs> so guys i actually we got this is a q a session of course so yeah, if anyone's got questions and i know we've got a, a bunch in the chat are already. we going to address that question <laughs> we You'll will have to answer oh, do you want to get straight into this question or you want to talk a bit about the bit about the old days up, up to you man we can go straight into this if you like you yeah. put it up there there's a pros and cat oh jeez. Let's talk about the first bit first, right? Because I do get this question quite a lot, and I remember going through the learning curve myself, actually. So, oh, what Robert's asking? Yeah. So, when you're progressing, if you've built yourself a single channel amp, you know that's a nice, nice place to start. You might, mm -hmm. you might have done a Champ or an, an 800 or whatever. Maybe even your your amp, Bruce, in your class, right? But then you want to progress into a channel switcher. What do you need to know about relays? Oh, well, you have to learn that skill just like any other skill. Um, you do need a DC power supply, as you guys know, but I guess I'm talking to Robert now. Um, yeah. You need a DC power supply. And it is a lot of times guys want to run their relays off the filaments, the 6.3 oh. volts. And that is so awkward and not a great way to do it because now you run into issues with you have to float. You can't have a ground not easily. And if you do, then you got problems with that. I don't know. Like anything in guitar amps, you don't have to invent anything new. Just look at what other people have already done. There's nothing new in guitar amp stuff that you have to invent. What would you recommend for for DC supplies, Bruce? Um, boy, because not every, not every transformer is going to have a second rewind that you could you could utilize. Yeah, yeah of course not. Um, gosh, I would say you need a little itty bitty transformer and a little power supply. I mean, that's how we we used to do it before we were able to you know have custom transformers because we're so cool, but. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, you typically in a chassis like that, hopefully you would have enough room for a little transformer that's, you know, 12 volts at half an amp or quarter of an amp or whatever. And yeah, 
And even now, I don't know, I haven't done it, but I see all kinds of little, you know, $3 switching power supplies that people are sticking in their amps and use them for, for that stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of my, how I would do it, but. Cause Dave, we've been, we've been chatting a bit about these switch mode power supplies that you can put into an amp, which can supply enough current to be able to do uh, DC heaters as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I haven't yeah, used. Have you used them, Dave? Yeah, there's a cool. There's a cool one. Jason knows the model number. I don't have enough hand. Cool one that Recom makes. Kind of like this, but smaller. Yeah, yeah smaller. AC. Yeah, ACN twelve volt DC out, one point six amps, and it works perfectly for DC heaters and relays. Cool. Well, that kind of mm -hmm. answers the question. Nowadays, that's about as easy as you can be. So. Yeah, and it's universal voltage, so oh god, whatever, that's fine. Okay, we'll do Just like tack it in, tack it in, and go. It works. Yeah, we'll do that, yeah. Robert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As far as how you learn, there's you learn by making the mistakes. Unfortunately, there are little things that you'll learn. You don't want to leave what the end of a capacitor floating. You know, if it's an, a coupling cap off a tube. You always have to have, you can't have one of it, one end of it disconnected because when you connect the relay and it's slammed shut, now it's going to pop. So there's where you use, I don't know what you call them, pull down, discharge resistors, you know, some yeah. high value stuff. I mean, you guys know yep. all this stuff too. So, yeah. So and you, in terms of convention, do you guys normally have, like, let's just say you've got a two channel lamp, clean channel, and a gain channel? Would you have the gain channel set in the normally closed position of the relay, or do you not care? Doesn't matter. I always uh, go with that. What what I said is just a convention that I started with, and I always. I do. I years ago made a grave error. I guess I guess for everyone that I don't understand what the big deal is, but you're going to say the pedal light is backwards, aren't you? I am. <laughs> yeah, this is it, man. But it's it's not because on the pedal it says clean. Mm -hmm. So if you press it, the light comes on. And what is it? It's clean. You just gotta change the label. Yeah, this is it. Why is this a problem? <laughs> well, it's funny. I never, I never quite understood that one. I've seen that one. That complaint. And I told him put a green light in there, and then you'll feel like that's the clean. Thing. I've 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 told him that too, and sometimes that works. And the other thing I noticed is my two button foot switch has the label clean, and most of the time I don't get any complaints. But huh. the single button foot switch just has an LED because it's just like a two channel thing, you know. Yeah. And it doesn't say clean on it, so when the LED comes on and it's clean, it freaks them out. <laughs> I I don't understand this logic. But, well, oh. there's your answer, Jason, is to make the pedal indicator match whatever the amp is doing. Yeah. So, well, I went. I the reason that I started following the the gain channel when the re, when the relay is not energized is because the way that I was wiring the foot switch was such that the LED would light when the coil is not. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, yeah. It's like, whichever, whichever way you do it, you just you can match them up. Yeah, you can do it. You can do the logic either all the, any different way, but it just yeah. Um, what about the what about the last piece of the question here, guys? The mute um, a muting circuit con pros and cons of a muting circuit. Uh, well, you know, I got to say the 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 Mesa one, which was actually taken from PV. All right. Yep. Uh, works pretty well. Uh, may say abuse that a bit. <laughs> uh, right, put it all, because, all over the amp. Because when when you were Bruce, when you were talking about pull down resistors and things, they don't do a lot of that. <laughs> ah, Mesa, they they you know they'll switch EQs right off the high voltage of the cathode follower. Okay, of the cathode with a relay, nice. one hundred and seventy volts switching right into the EQs. And then they mute it, of course. But yeah, you know, the mute 
Uh, when, how about you just get it as quiet as you can and the mute takes care of the rest? That's the way I would look at it, you know, like if if you need to have the mute even. Yeah, I've always done that, like even in the Mod 50 back then or the IE4s or whatever they all, well, the IE4 didn't, but, you know, the stuff with potential popping, especially the modular stuff. Um, yeah, I have a, now I do, I've always used an H11. For the mute. For the, just for the mute. Because then you're just driving an LED. There's no, you know, FETs to deal with. And I mean, there's one in the opto isolator, but it, they never fail, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's not as cheap as an FET, but then you can drive, you're, all you're driving is an LED and you can make it mute with that. Just ground the signal somewhere down the, you know down the road at the effects send or something like that. I wouldn't do it on the, after the effects loop though, if you don't have to, because then it's going to mute whatever tails are carrying on. Yeah. It's going to mute that when you switch, even if, and then if there's a pop and you have a delay on, you'll hear yeah. the pop carrying over in the delay trail. Yeah. So the, you the send for sure. The, the pop echoes, but not the original pop. Yeah. yeah. So it is best to mute before the, before the loop the, uh, at the send side or whatever, somewhere over there. That's the way to do it. And in terms of any cons, can you think of other than, I guess the obvious one is that you get a instantaneous drop in the audio. Well, it's yeah. only for like what? 10 milliseconds or something. Yeah. This is it. Right whatever the length of time for a relay to switch, which is only a few milliseconds. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you're not going to hear a 10 millisecond. I think, I think as a, I think players, once you work with that piece of gear, you figure out when to switch it, right? You can switch, even if it's just an instantaneous dropout, you can do it completely seamlessly. Just don't do it, you know, do it, do it just before you hit that next chord or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Quite difficult. Now, in the mute stuff that I have, I didn't do it because I don't do the processor things. It's either, well, we have a bunch of friends. We all have the same friends that, you know, we'll do a little microprocessor thing. But my mute cycle is like 10 milliseconds long. But what it does, it turns on the mute two milliseconds before the switching takes place. So it's already muted. Then you switch. And then like six milliseconds later, it unmutes it. So it's kind of in, it switches between the, between those two on times of the mute thing. Mm -hmm. So, but you need a friend or you have to be able to do that processor stuff. Or you have to use the, the PV slash Mesa method. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. you can do it that way too. Yeah. And I Dave, with that, sorry, Bruce. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, with that with that PV slash um, Mesa circuit, Dave, you can, uh, you can it's not time it. You can control the timing with a capacitor, though. Yeah. Yeah, the capacitor that's on the on the trigger side will alter how long it's muted for. Yeah. I mean, it's not a perfect science with it, but you can just like, oh, that's too long. Smaller capacitor. Okay. Yeah. I think I think Mesa used a 0.1 cap, and you could probably go about as high as a 0.68 or somewhere in between the two. Yeah, and then it it'll just time it just right. Cool. It's a weird way to do it. They just use a triac. I was gonna say so, there's an SCR, a triac, or something. Yeah, it's a triac that it, that just you know it's just paralleled off the coil, and it just causes a momentary mute, and it's just the uh, you know J175 or whatever. Hmm. It just mutes. Works cool. fine if you're doing an effect send that's a pedal level send because you're not putting a lot of signal, you know, right. to J175 because it can't take a lot. It's a circuit I want to try. I've just, I've done it so far just it's, with a relay. It's crazy how simple it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had some boards made that are surface mount. You, you can't believe how tiny it is. <laughs> yeah. It'd be like, it'd be like your fingernail, wouldn't it? Yeah. It, yeah it, no, it literally is your fingernail. That's how big, I mean, like it's, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> you can have made, you can have made, you know, from one of the PC board places and, and they'll stuff the whole thing and you just, oh, they'll like do the surface mount for And you, it yeah. costs you nothing. Yeah. 
shipping you know, board and card. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the board, the board stuffed or I don't know what they are exactly, but they're yeah, like, it's, four, it's like picking or five a piece or something, mm. <laughs> you know, for the little postage stamp board. <laughs> well, then Close you mount it. it on the foot switch jack and everything's right there. Uh, yes, you could do that. <laughs> it's not anyway, that's cool. a good idea. Yeah. We've got a question here from my buddy Shay from Monomyth, who's down in uh, Bloomington, Indiana. Is Shay. So, hi, Bruce. Hey. You've made a lot of amps and products over the years. Cu- curious to know your personal favorite. Interesting. Um, you know, they're not my children. So <laughs> they're just amps, but <laughs> I, you know, out of all the stuff, I don't know. I've, I've always thought the modular stuff was kind of cool and it's lived for like, I don't know, 20 years and it's still out there. So that was kind of an, a neat idea. Um, as how far as come, like the ch- huh? How did that come to be? I'm going to go down the tangent here for a second. How, how did the modular idea well, kind that of goes back, right? That early, early. Here we go. Well, here we go into the old stories days. now. So oh, good God. segue. That one, it, not in the form that it is now, but it was an idea. And I got <laughs> uh, what I did was bought a little. I think I had four of them. A uh, little half rack, one space metal boxes. I don't remember who. You know, you can buy stuff just raw boxes. Yeah, yeah. And I made four little preamps, two preamps, one in each box. So there was a Fender and a box and a Marshall or whatever, four different sounding tube preamps with just an in and out jack and a power supply input on each one of those modules. I have a picture of it, but I don't know where it is. Um, So they were individual. You could plug a guitar in and out. It was just a preamp with an external and a half, half rack box that you yeah. could just slot into a, yeah, a so rack. Yeah, you screwed four of them into a rack. They bolted together. Then I made an additional gadget that was a loop switcher of sorts. It was more like a preamp selector, but it was a loop switcher. So you took these four preamps and put them in the individual loops on the switcher, and then you could foot switch. And I actually made eight loops in the switcher, but we only made four preamps. And then the high voltage supply was in the switcher thing. So it was like a whole package, a whole system that had to go together. And that powered the modules. It had a power supply output and you just, you know, the high voltage and everything else and just daisy change it to each one of the other modules. So you have four little preamps with knobs on them, you know, just self-contained things and a switcher. And that was the idea. And I made a few of those, well, I'll call it a system, a few of those packages like that. And a couple of local bands used them. Yeah, I think it was before you were born, Dave. There's a band called Romance. Before I was born. <laughs> before you were born. No, it's, it's funny. <laughs> Could be. Anyway, they were, you know, Detroit was a was a happening place in the 70s and 80s and all that. We had millions of bands. So anyway, you made something cool and one guy got it and then everybody else had to have it. So we sold a few of those and then I dropped it. It was just, I don't know, I get ideas and I do it and then I move on. And then actually I was working at Rocktron years later. And Frank Lamar, my guitar player, friend, accountant, partner. Um, when we were at Rocktron, when they were going out of business, when GHS bought them. And he was the accountant at Rocktron. And we both worked there for that period of time. And he, one day he says, Bruce, we're going to go out of business tomorrow. What are you going to do? I said, I don't know. <laughs> we'll figure something out. He goes, what was that modular thing you did like years ago? And it was that. It was that thing I just described. And he said, you want to do something with that? I was like, oh, okay, let's do that. So we worked together on it. It came up with the whole new concept that's the same as it is now with the, you know, the slots and the plug-in things and all that. So that's where it started. Just a kooky idea from you know now that was what i don't know 30 years ago probably 
And then, uh, uh, how did it, how did it come? Oh, it wasn't 30 years ago. Man. <laughs> no, it wouldn't have been that. Yeah. No. Well, it's 25 because the, the patent is, we're at about so, 20 years now. Around 2000, somewhere around there, or maybe just after. I don't know. I can't talk in years. Yes. I would say around 2000, whenever Rock Charm went out of business. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. I remember, let's see, you went to work for Rock Charm mid 90s, right? Yeah, and I was there for a few years. Yeah, you were there for a few years. So it was, you know, a little more than 20 years ago, we came up with the idea, or Frank and I. Actually, it was, it was almost more his concept idea that he got from the other thing that I had done. It was like, wow, that's cool. Let's do that. So we just just did it, just made it up, and there you go. How did it evolve? Where, where, where did it evolve to from there, though, Bruce? Like, I mean, obviously, all the way through to the synergy kind of concepts now. Well, but we made, uh, whenever it was, 2000, probably, 2021, I don't know, somewhere back then. Yeah. And we made, we made a preamp, and we made four modules, a Fender, a Vox, and two Marshalls, the standard stuff. And the M4 rack that we called it. And we were going to, it's like, okay, how do, what do we do with this now? It's like, well, let's go to NAM with it. So we went to Nashville NAM. We didn't have any money. We didn't have anything, but we had this little rack mount preamp and two, it was funny. We had the, the rack mount preamp, two 112 vintage 30 cabinets, one guitar, and we didn't have a power amp, so I had to throw something together on a piece of wood right before the show. And I think we brought it with us in a suitcase and just put <laughs> it on the floor, a pair of 6L6 tubes behind the rack and a guitar. And that was our whole booth and a chair. Maybe we had two <laughs> chairs. I don't we'll know. Have a chair. <laughs> and we go to NAM. We're like, well, let's just go. This will be cool, you know. And it, it was Nashville, so that was neat. But... um. You know, people were looking at it. It's like, oh, this is a cool new thing. Anything new is cool. So people were looking at it. And there was a guy, Dave Wilkerson was his name. And he owned a music store called... Techstar Services. Techstar. That's in this building called Soundcheck. It's this humongous rehearsal building they had what i don't know three or four fully equipped rehearsal studio or auditoriums yeah. where the bands would do their final dress rehearsals before they go on tour and being nashville it was a hot you know it was busy and he had his music mm -hmm. store in there so he knew every guitar player in town because he was in the building with them uh so dave comes by and Dave's, uh, you'd have to know Dave, but um, he comes by, he goes, so what do you got here? We showed him and he's like, oh, that's interesting. And he looked, he checks it out. He goes, that's kind of cool. And he goes, tell you what. And uh, there was a Vox module. That was the big deal in Nashville was the Vox module. Mm -hmm. And he came, he says, all right. He goes, I'm going to bring a few of the local guys by and check it out. If you can convince them that this is really cool, then you're in. These are the guys. So he brings back, brings a couple of guitar player guys. I didn't know anybody. And it was before all these guys were big. So it was Brent Mason and Dan Huff or who, I don't know, you know, whatever the big shot local guys, but they weren't big shots. They were just local guys, local right. studio guys. Yep. And... They came and they sit down. It's like, oh, this is interesting. And I think, I don't remember if it was Brent Mason, but he starts playing this. And Dave goes, put on that box thing. So we put on the box module and they were all like, holy shit. They go, this is like kind of amazing. It was vintage 30 speakers, 6L6 power tubes, and a stupid little module that we called a box. And they played it and they said, this is so close to my vintage you know fawn el84 bulldog speaker vox they said i would take this on the road and then i don't have to take my my vintage vox amps 
So what we end up doing, we ended up selling a whole bunch of stuff in Nashville. And that kind of, that's where it really started when it got, you know, exposed to people. Yeah, and but was Dave was, Dave, Dave was exposed to you before that. Yeah. So yeah, that goes way back. Yeah. That, that goes way back to the beginning kind of. So, yeah. He was so, an IE4 dealer, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think he got involved, I think. Right. Yeah. Cause Somehow. I remember being there and stuff at Dave's place, you know, when I was doing stuff with Josh from Voodoo Lab and stuff. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, I know because he had the original, uh, He's the one that facilitated that original power amp that mm -hmm. got stuck in Nashville for the, the dawn of time and that you got back. Yeah. And now Mike Torin has it. Yeah. Yeah. I figured I'd give it to somebody that I know would keep it forever. Yeah. That guy never sells anything. So. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> he just keeps buying. He's going to need a house. He's going to have to buy a house next. Uh -huh. Another house to house all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so then we're at NAM, and I just remember we're at NAM doing this our first time, and the guys from Randall kept coming by. Doug Reynolds comes by, and they're like, whoa, <laughs> this is the coolest thing we've ever seen. And then he leaves. Then he comes by again over and over and brings different people back each time. So after that show, we ended up licensing the modular. We have a patent on it or had a patent. Now he's got it now, but we had a patent on just that plug-in thing. So we licensed that technology to Randall and I designed stuff for them. Really the same thing, just tweaked with whatever sounds they wanted for their guys. Uh, so we were able to make ours and have the licensing agreement and Randall had their versions of it and we did ours. So that's and the, the, the form factor, if you like, Bruce, so the, the module itself and, <clears throat> and the connecting interface and so on, that's pretty much stayed the same all the way through, right? Because you can take Synergy modules, new Synergy modules and throw them into a Randall most of them, maybe not most all of them. them. Well, there are, well, most of them, yeah. There are um, a few now that you can't. Yeah, which <clears> I, <throat> I actually, tell you the truth, I had to fight for that when, when they were doing Synergy. I kind of had to fight for that backwards compatibility. You know, and they're like, well, yeah. Apple doesn't, you know, it's like, we're not Apple. You can't cut off. 10 years of customers because you think you're Apple. Come on. So yeah, I did have to kind of fight for that uh, backwards compatibility thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there are a few of the modules now. Some of them have gone out the window because there's, there, you know, is a big power supply drains <clears throat> and plus and minus supplies for, yeah. Or, um, for graphic EQs and things like that. And, yeah, I think there was a diesel one that he had either wrong information. Or I don't know. I don't know what that was all about. Yeah, uh, yeah. so there's some that don't work now, but they, yeah. the, older, the older ones do. And there are some features on the new ones that do not work with the old <laughs> ones. The modules themselves work, but the very early Agnator stuff were single channel modules. Yeah. And then later on, we went to the two channel thing. So the early amps and racks do not do the two channel modules. Right. But well, they, there's a switch inside the module. They do one channel of the They give you one module. or the other channel yeah. when you select. Yeah, them. I remember playing with it because I had a I worked on a Randall head that needed it had been modded with an effects loop that no longer worked. And it was uh I think it was a lynch box or something. I can't remember. Hmm. But it had it was loaded with synergy modules and I remember playing with it because you could set the, like the little dip switches on the module to set it to the channel that you wanted to activate. Yeah. And then you put the module back in. Yeah. But they all work. They seem to work. They seem yeah. To work cool. Most of them have that. Most of the new modules, if it has two different channels in the module. I think most of it's been abandoned now, but yeah, <laughs> but for the newest, the newest, newest stuff. Yeah. Yeah. From a from a design perspective, as a question for, for both you guys, really, from a design perspective with that modular approach, is the um, the the removal, I guess, of the power amp. So if you think about an amp design, you kind of might think of it 
in the entire ramp, including how the power ramp's configured. When you separate those away and you're no longer, I guess, in control of the power ramp, what considerations come into play with your module design when you think about that? You mean the fact that you'll have a different power yeah. ramp? Yeah. So let's say your, you know, your design that you're trying to replicate might have some special things in the negative feedback line or whatever that yeah. you you know is not going to be there now with the modular approach. So well, well, <laughs> you know, you don't. There's compromises in everything in life. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The advantage of being being able to have. 15 different amps in one little box and switch modules and all that stuff to me kind of outweighs the subtle differences between the power amps more or less. So point yeah. being, no, it's not exactly the same. And I, you know, any power amp you switch is going to have an effect, but you know, 90% of the sound is in the module itself. So, you know, it's something you live with. You want to have the convenience or the the ability to switch amp channels like that. Well, yeah, you're going to have yep. to compromise on the power amp. We kind of tried to aim, what, towards the middle, Dave? I don't know. Well, you know, the, the thing that I always would do when I was working with this stuff or tweaking it or listening to it or is I'd always try to have the original amp, and then I would just have, like, if it was synergy, I'd have the synergy power amp with the module and with an amp switcher. And like, you would just see, can I get the sound of the amp with that stuff? Right. So you and tweak the module could, to compensate for if it. If you could turn the knobs to get the tone pretty close, then it was done, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we never yeah. claimed they were identical to every amp you'd ever get. They're just, really close and pretty cool and you know all that kind of stuff agree agree yeah. with all of that yeah no. it's good that's cool um yeah robert this is the first question we had where he said there were two two legends he actually said <laughs> <laughs> okay you're Thanks, forgiven <laughs> I guess Jason's just a legend in the making at this point. Yes, I, don't know. I this thought this it was me that was I just, out, you know? I just hope that some of the some of it will rub off if I spend enough time with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, I think got, the modular thing was probably my favorite thing because it lasted twenty years. You know. Yeah. But there were some other cool amps along the way. You know. Uh, you know the original preamp. Yeah, the IE4 preamp, which nobody knows. Well, I shouldn't say nobody knows about it, but. Oh, I don't know about that. It's always been kind of an underground thing, more or less. But uh, yeah, before the modular thing, there was a four channel preamp that Dave and I basically developed together when he was working at. I was working for myself then. or uh, No, no, no. I'm sorry. I was working at Making Music then. Yeah, you were still at Making and, Music. When um, did that. So how, how that came about was. There was a guitar player that was a longtime client of Bruce, Randy Jacobs, who had moved out to L.A., and he had come into my shop to get a rig done, and he had come in with a modified Soldano preamp. That's right. Where the center channel was modified to, well, I guess it was the third channel kind of thing of the preamp. And, uh, and, and man, it just sounded great. You know, I was just like, oh my God, this is great. And I knew Bruce from when I was a kid living in Michigan. I had a few things done by him and, and stuff over time. And I just called Bruce up and I go, this is awesome. You should make a preamp. Let me help you, you know, promote this and, and, and put it to all the studio guitar players and all my clients and stuff time and so this is before you moved to la dave you no 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 this is when i'm in la this oh is, you're in la this was probably around uh, roughly around 1990 ish yeah sure uh, 90 91 maybe wow. and uh and and then so and i go here's what it should be a clean fender a broken up fender a crunchy marshall and a higher gain thing be four channels 
And so this is how the IE4 got born. <clears throat> you ever seen course, an IE4, Jason? Only only online, Bruce. I've okay. never seen one in the, in the flesh. And I've seen you. You're making them again, though, aren't there you? Are you some, there are some in Australia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's that guy, Jack? Jack Jones. Jack, Jack Jones. Jones had a green one. Had a, <laughs> had, had a green one, and I know he sold it to someone else. And that green one, if I recall, did not have a MIDI board in it. Right. It was just uh, latching switches yeah. or whatever. So there's at least one in Australia. So. And the only other green one belongs to Keith Howland, who used to play in Chicago for 10 million years. Right. Yeah. And somewhere out there in the world is a polished red one that belonged to Randy Jacobs, but it was stolen. Yeah. Actually, we did a bunch of color. We did three or four different colors, only two of each. So yeah. there were two red ones, two gold ones, two black ones, maybe five colors. We didn't change anything. It was all the identical circuit, different color box. But long ago, people were requesting over, you know, the gold polished one because it sounded better than the rest of them. It's like, uh, it's the color of the box, but it's the like, same. Whatever. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I kind of got off track there. But. I, 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 I always think in the back of my mind that one day I'll find Randy's preamp somewhere. Somebody's got it somewhere. It's These easy. It's easy to eventually. figure it out, yeah. what it is. So if it ever comes up, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're going to find that fucker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's probably been sold a few times, you know, so yeah. Who knows where it is now? Anyway, I don't even have one. I, well, I gave my, I sold mine to Mike Torin, the original one. Right. Of I course. It's going to sit around here and it'll just get broken or lost or somebody will steal it. I think I sold, I, I think I had, I had one briefly. Somehow I acquired, I don't remember how. And then I think I sold another one to Mike Torin. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a few. Yeah. Yeah. A, di a silver, a silver faced one. So yeah. they started off as red mostly. And yes. with, with the kind of grayish knobs. And then they migrated to a polished uh, polished aluminum if I right. recall, uh, face with black knobs, Yeah, which was a good look. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of the first thing that Dave and I actually worked together on. To and, then, and then that went into a head, a TLO 100 head. Right. And many of the clients bought those mm -hmm. on Shanks and right. Eber and a million other people. Bruce, are you are you working on a, a new release of that IE4? I've seen you yeah. post about it. Is well, that actually oh, out now? Or? Yes and no. We did a batch of those. When I say a batch, like 20 or 25 a few years ago. And it was funny because I hadn't seen an IE4 forever for decades not that i forgot about it but i didn't see it it was like yeah okay cool and then out of nowhere and it was the one that i sold to mike torin a local guy i know jim cates friend of mine he calls me out of nowhere and he says bruce i got i'm i'm not you i haven't used my e4 in 10 years and i want to sell it he goes but i don't do facebook or any of that stuff he goes can you help me sell it and it was the first one not the prototype but the first you know, real one that we actually repeated and we call that production. And I said, sure. So I'm going to help him sell. And I tell Terry, my wife, I go, hey, Jim Cates wants to sell his preamp. She goes, so shouldn't you own it since I don't own one? And I said, oh, yeah, that kind of makes sense. So I bought it. <laughs> I got it. And I plugged it in. And I, like I said, I hadn't seen one in years and I plugged it in. It was like, holy crap, this thing sounds great. Yeah. So <laughs> I thought, well, gosh, I wonder if people would want these again. So I just go on my, fa I don't do a promotion. I don't know how to do all that stuff. So I just went on my Facebook page and posted on some of the forums and crap. I said, yeah, we're going to make these again. Anybody interested? And boom, we sold 25 of them. Wow. So now a couple of years later, um, I thought, well, let's do that again. So we're doing it again. People are ordering them. It's taking forever because we had problems getting metal boxes. 
um, which we've resolved. In fact, Kyle at KSR is now doing the metal work for us. Really? Which is cool. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Why yeah. was it hard getting metal boxes? Because of the demands for quantities. That be Well, we, at first, the ones, let me qualify that. The first batch we did, we got from Robert Chapman. Right. And it took us a year and returned them, I think, three times, the entire batch, because they would scratch them in shipping or they would scratch them before they packed them. Then they get damaged in shipping. Then they're wrong. We actually sent 25 chassis back and forth over about eight months, and they ah, kept shit. remaking them. Oh, it man. was nuts. It was like, okay, well, I love you guys, but that didn't work out. So then we had to seek out a new supplier. And I found it really anodized, right? They were anodized here. Yeah. Oh, but okay. they were scratched when we get them, so we can't anodize them because they're scratched. It doesn't cover the scratches. I see. So why, was, why powder coat is good. <laughs> Well, these yeah. are powder coated now. Yeah. Um, so we did that. Uh, and then, well, then after that was COVID and all that stuff. But uh, we had a supplier right here in Michigan, Grand Rapids. But their minimum, and they, we went and visited with them. It's like, oh, yeah, we can do this. Great, great, great. But the quantities they wanted, and I had to pay for the whole thing up front. So it's, you know, little guy like me, that's thousands of dollars. Yeah. So I was like, okay, that's not going to work. So then uh, then I called Kyle one day. I said, hey, you want to make my stuff for me? He's like, are you kidding? Sure. So Kyle's going to do it. So when I say it's trouble, it's not necessarily the supplier trouble because that's pretty much past. But uh, having it done locally or within driving distance is kind of a big deal too. So right. now we're doing them now. I, I should have Kyle's samples within the next couple of weeks i hope and then uh, we're on our way everything's here we've got all the boards transformers everything it's just the metal box but you and know is it a three rex is a three rack space no it's two that's two yeah okay. four channels two rack space it's a cool unit but yeah, yeah. I'm, cur I'm super curious here, but i don't have it here i gave it to kyle so <laughs> <laughs> was that the one you were supposed to send to me yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was before I shipped twenty five of them. So yeah, yeah when I, I get it back, I'll send one to you. But you'll get it. You'll get it eventually. Yeah. 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 Well, it wasn't good. It wasn't a Pete gonna do a video or something? Yeah. That but, was the original idea. Well, they were already getting built and sold. It's like, well, I don't need to do a video because they're all sold. Why would That's I do? True. It again? That's so true. That's true. I kind of back. Although, up. if you did it now, then you'd probably sell another one. Another batch. Yeah. Well, now I have a reliable supplier that doesn't demand I make 50, you know, $400 chassis all at the same time, then, you know, it's doable. Kyle doesn't need or want those kind of quantities. That's cool. It's um, it's really encouraging to hear that about what Kyle's doing for you. That's yeah. that's awesome because... Well, he was here the other day. They came. It's funny. Him yeah. and a couple of friends came to Detroit to see Metallica. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so they were here. So they stopped by my shop. Um, and uh, that's when I gave him the IE4. But uh, have yeah. you been down to see his? Uh, no, his I'll have to do that yeah. one of these days. But just it's about Super three, cool. three and a half hours from here. So he has all the metalworking stuff. Yeah, he has right. a whole factory. He's he's kind of obsessed with buying machinery. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yeah, I've, I've, visited, I've visited the so Shay and I went and spent the afternoon okay. there. That's right, yeah. And um, this was back in late May, and and man, he's got everything, man. He's and yeah. he's got eighteen thousand square foot facility. It's big, but yeah. everything from woodwork to metal to pick and place machines for PCBs. Yeah. Everything in house, other than anodizing, they don't do, but they do the powder coating. So look at that. That's crazy. Yeah, you should talk to him. <laughs> yeah, <well>, I am. <laughs> there was Both a guy when, when we had when we had Kyle on this on the channel. Mm -hmm. We did one of these, you know, three or four weeks ago, whatever. There was a guy in the chat. I think no, it's actually someone that had posted on Kyle's on their the KSR AMP group. But it was a cool a cool analogy. So we we read it out and, for Kyle. 
and the guy posted because he'd been and visited Kyle at KSR at the factory because he has customers come through and so on. Yeah. And he described it. He goes, "It's like, it's it's like the chocolate factory, and <laughs> and Kyle is Willy Wonka." Uh -huh. <laughs> well, he's a real engineer. You know, we're yes. all hacks. He's yes. like a, the real thing. So he, yeah. you know, as far as his engineering abilities, he's kind of you know, a little above all of us. Oh, no doubt. I, Bruce, I saw some of the stuff that he was doing in uh, Autodesk Inventor, I think, 3D models of yeah. some stuff. The the latest amp that he just released, actually, that Orion lunchbox thing. And, yeah, that's just that's just next level what he's doing there Yeah, from an engineering perspective. Yeah. I still use and, Corel Draw, so, you know. Yeah, me too. <laughs> 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 I use it for faceplates and stuff, Bruce, oh, yeah. but I... What do you use for PCB? I have Eagle. Okay. I bought it, God, well, another 20 years ago. I needed to learn how to do circuit boards, and yeah. Eagle looked like the easiest and cheapest one at the time. So I bought it, and it was like, okay, I can do yeah. this. And, you know, here 20 years later, I, I'm not going to switch. No, once you learn something, you don't want to do yeah, it. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay, it's not the most advanced, you know. Hey, as long as it gets the does it for me? Yeah, and we're not we're not designing computer motherboards here, you know. Like we're, no, just... we're not making space shuttles, so we're good. <laughs> we're, not. Yeah. we're not. Hey, can I ask how, how did you guys first meet? So, Dave, you obviously grew up, as I understand it, not too far from Bruce. Did you just kind of like get curious and go and knock on Bruce's door one day? How did that all kind of happen? Uh so it would have been uh, yeah, this is this is really stretching. Uh, when Bruce worked at Arnold Williams Music. Oh, okay. And he was the the I guess house repair guy, or you know, yeah, house there are a couple of us, but mod yeah. guy, repair guy, or something like that. I'm trying to remember exactly the first thing, and and I might be confusing two instances. Did you have your shop, your Natex shop? I forgot where it was before you worked at Arnold Williams or oh. after? Uh, I think you had a shop before you worked at Arnold Williams. I know I worked at a, I know you'd been to my house. Yeah, no, I had been to your house. <laughs> oh, man. See, this is where it gets weird. There's a couple instances I remember, right? Yeah. Uh, one, one, I do remember being at Arnold Williams Music and playing a JC Man 100 Marshall that was modded by Bruce. Okay. Which I do believe think was that Mega Drive mod, uh, you know, Probably, thing. Yeah. Which is still the IE4 Channel 4. In, 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 in front of, yeah, right. Basically, <laughs> right. In front of the uh, 800 circuit. Yeah. Is that, um, Dave, is that that schematic that we looked at? Yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah. in the Guitar yeah. Player magazine yeah. or something. Yeah. Like yeah. That. Where they oh, misprinted so, everything. I mean, there were there were there were a few alterations to the eight hundred yeah, side yeah, yeah, of it, yeah. but but I mean, you know, but that was just cool, cool sir. basic thing, yeah. Basically, that sticking you know. a tube in front of an eight hundred, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah to mi to mimic Basically, a super overdrive mm -hmm. or an yeah. OD one or whatever it was that you you a b you know you know yeah. thing to. And it still actually does sound good for that if you compare that to an OD one. Mm -hmm. Or OD two or whatever you used, I don't remember. I don't remember. Um, yeah, so I do particularly. I remember the Arnold Williams, and I, I think, I think it was before that though. It was before that. So the first thing I took a Laney amp, a Pro Tube fifty amp, to Bruce. I must have been fifteen years old or something. Yeah, wow. To at his own shop somewhere and he goosed it up or modded the front end never did like it yeah. but didn't it didn't come out right for me but but you know it it but you know i was still figuring out what i liked then well we were all young you know you know yeah well it had more gain but you know yeah. um and then uh and then later i had stumbled on an amp that I really liked that 
Dan Russell had done. Okay. And I remember taking a particular amp when you were at Arnold Williams, another amp, and I said, can you copy this amp? And you copy that amp on this. It was a 50-watt Marshall. Okay. A Plexi Marshall. <laughs> ah. When they weren't Plexi Marshalls. They, they had no Tolex on the outside. Junk. It was a 50-watt yeah. Plexi Marshall and no Tolex on the outside. God, I wish I still had that amp. And it came out fucking great. Yeah. And I wish to God I never sold it. Why did I sell it? I'm not sure. Because no. you're a guitar player. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and I still remember to the fondly remember that amp to this day. Uh, wow, it, it was really it was really cool. Yeah, uh, and so I think those were the. Might have asked him one other thing one other time. I came to his house. I don't remember what that was about. Yeah. So Dave, by by then, I mean you were already in the kind of tinkering mindset. Oh yeah, I was. I was a very inquis like like I've always said. I was a a kid that. If I got into something, you wanted to pull it apart. I would pull everything apart, take it apart, and learn everything I could learn about it. So I used to be into bicycles. I used to be really into like BMX racing and stuff. Man, I could strip down a bike and put it back together in no time. You know, just like I knew everything about it, <laughs> <laughs> every little part and every little cool thing. You know, and that just translated. To everything in my life i had to if i was interested in it i would learn it if i wasn't interested in it forget it good luck teaching me. yeah like i could never learn languages for some reason i don't know why oh, no. i wasn't interested <laughs> I, I had the worst block with languages and i took them for years and i still to this day is like how many years of french did i take holy shit a lot and i can't speak any of it not a single word yeah yeah not really a couple words maybe you know most of the guys in the in the amp world it's the same story mm -hmm. you know most of us are not you know degreed engineers some are doesn't make you a creative guitar amp guy but you know the not at all in fact generally speaking it 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 works against you it can you know and uh, you, you know maybe 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 you don't get your engineering degree because, uh, you know, you're too interested in fucking around with guitar amps. Well, this that's is what it. happened to me. I went to school, you know, after high school, I went to college yeah. and I went through three and a half years of engineering school and I hated it so much that I quit. I never got the degree. Yeah. Well, wow. because I wanted to be, uh, you know, a guitar player in a band. So kind of regret it now, 50 years later, but I had fun. For 50 years you know hey you know you, you worked on stuff for people <laughs> it's a pretty forever. it's a it's a it's a good innings bruce so yeah. so so bruce you must have had like back then you must have had young guys or whatever bringing in amps for mods and stuff all the time what what was it that what was the thing that kept you guys kind of in contact together like that has transpired obviously well, into a i don't know if it really that that i mean i i mean i left michigan yeah. And then, you know, I, I mean, I had several things done by Bruce and, uh, you know, there, and there's a few other things in there too, you know, over time, you know, he was the guy to go to, he was the guy, you know, you, to do, to do the work. Wasn't that many people at the time there that, no. you know, would, would do that, uh, stuff. Uh, what was the other guy? There was that, that the other Did guy that was, it? yeah. Fast Eddie or something. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was yeah. more of the repair guy. Yeah, I think he he's the one that originally did stuff for like Dave Black and stuff originally. But Probably, yeah. He had that he had that thing where they put the the insert loop in with the DBX one hundred and sixty yeah uh, compressor and then a post phase master. Yeah, so they just cut the wire off the treble control and went out to two jacks. Yeah, and put so the, the level was you know like twenty volts coming out of the amp and all that. twenty volts going into the compressor. Yeah, <laughs> and then back and then back back in. And then you have a post phase master, so you can imagine there's an extra gain stage right there. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, Fast Eddie was just kind of a crotchety old guy who kind of fell into the amp thing. I, I assume he was like a TV repair guy or something in his. I don't know. I never. Years. Met him, never saw him. Never. 
Yeah. And Bruce, I, how did you like so back back then, right? You know, the old mean, days. The old days. Yeah. The old days. Back in, so back now, in the so, Western times. Yeah. <laughs> I call it Flintstone times. Yeah. <laughs> well, we the had better, our better days. The better days. Yeah. How how did you learn? Like, there's so much information available today, right? So if someone's getting into tinkering with amps and mods and blah blah blah, they just got to bloody search around on the forums and YouTube and stuff like that. Yeah. Where? So back then, none of that stuff was there, right? How did you, how did you guys kind of learn the craft? God, well, same with Dave. He was, he was there before the internet too. Yeah. Um, you know, Bruce, not- I learned it from Bruce. Yeah. Well, this is it. It's a question for both Bruce of you guys. Was my right? mentor, so that's that's where that information came from. Yeah. I am not sure. I mean, the printed information was available. And there were other companies doing stuff. It's funny. The first amp I ever made for myself was, uh, well, Boogie had just come out with the, I don't know, would it be the Mark II? The one with the switchable lead master and gain thing. The sole, you know, the, the overdrive switch, foot switching thing. And I remember that came out and I had a repair shop at the time. So I guess I was learning on other people's gear <laughs> but that's yeah. what did, yep. Um, yep. at their expense, unfortunately. But <laughs> I remember that amp came out and it's like, wow, this is really cool, but it's kind of weird. I don't, there's only one set of tone controls on it. And so you get, so I thought, well, maybe I can make my own amp and put two tone controls on it. So, so I did. Um, but you just looked at what others were doing. You could get schematics. You'd have to write to the companies, and some of them would send you stuff. And I don't know. It's kind of how I learned it was. I won't say it was the hard way because that's how you learned anything. How did you learn to play guitar? You just you got to put the Allison. You in. just did. Um, yeah. But I studied. You know, I'm kind of obsessive with with reading as well as doing, you know, doing the physical, working on amps. I mean, I still, I have a, you know, one of uh, Merlin Blenkow's book in my bathroom. And every right, time course. I go in the bathroom, I open the book. Just ra- just randomly to whatever page. It's like, oh, that's interesting. So, you know, it's kind of that you never stop learning. But how you start, God, I guess you just go for it. And if that didn't work, the idea is to figure out why it didn't work because you know when we're 20 years old we're not design engineers we're copiers and we look at what somebody else did and you know sometimes i'll see stuff that i did back then it's like oh my god i can't believe this that i did this and it's still alive but so i don't know it's 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 like anything you You just do man it just it's just the you know it you figure yeah every Every, every bit of information was hard to get. Yeah. You know, and super like, valuable. like artists will tell you this too. It's like back in my day, I had to learn songs from a record. Yeah. yeah. There was no YouTube video on how to play this song. I had yeah. to, you know, slow it down, figure it out. And, you know, yeah. like, and, and he goes, it was hard. It was hard. You know, sure. it, was, it was hard. There and was I no think that, maybe that made you, maybe that made you better. You know what I mean? In some respects, maybe, maybe the search and maybe the uh, the obsessive. Yeah, you know. look, Dave, I think there's some parallels there with. So if you think if you think about the analogy of learning and playing guitar, so when when we were all learning songs pre-internet, you did exactly that, right? You back and forth with the cassette tape or the record or whatever, yeah. but it does develop your ear. Um, and we also learned how to tune by ear because they hadn't invented tuners yet. This is this is right. <laughs> and yeah, then if you, if you think about time. that, if you think about that in terms of modding, or you know tinkering with a circuit, it's yeah. it's a similar thing, right? Because you're actually developing that understanding of if I change this, it's going to sound like that. Yeah. And then you have well, to find out. What? Well, well, like that that mega mod thing. I mean, that came about because. People were boosting their marsh, their JC made hundred style or JMP style marshals with a super overdrive pedal. Yeah, 
the right. Well, that was a specific guy. That was a local guitar. I'm still friends with him. His name is Don Scarcella. I think yeah, you yeah. might even know. Don. Yeah, I know Don. He brought me his Mar his Plexi Marshall when it was just a you know just an amp. They weren't like vintage. It was you know fairly new. And he brought his Plexi Marshall and a little whatever overdrive pedal it was. I don't know a green one or a yellow one. Yeah. And he said, "This is my sound." but I don't want to use this pedal. Can you make my amp sound like this where I just plug into the amp? Yeah. So I took the pedal and measured the gain. I said, show me how you set the knobs. And I measured the gain and the frequency response of the pedal. And then I took a tube and just sort of mimicked that. Yeah. Just gain and, and cut low and high end and put it in the amp. It was like, holy crap, this actually works. <laughs> so it's not like, you know, we're super smart and know something that somebody else didn't know. We just kind of did the work. Go for it, you know? Did the work. And you tell the customer, yes, you can do it, even though you have no idea how. And then you're forced to learn it, too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. That happens yeah. a lot. Yeah. 100%. And that still happens till this day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're just yeah. like, yeah, I can do. Yeah, I can do yeah, I can what do you're asking. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to figure yeah, it I out. I can do it. I think I can sometimes do you it. need that problem put in front of you, right? And then you then. pull your hair out for you know, yeah, three yeah. days figuring out. Well, I'm either going to learn something or or know never to say I'm going to do this again. Mm -hmm. There's a few of those too. So what yeah. about what? I, I remember something you used to have. Uh, you used to have. Something on your wall somewhere about boogie amps. Oh God! Something like ne uh, never, never, never assume the schematic is correct. Never assume there is well. a schematic. Never, uh, <laughs> never offer to modify. Yeah, the boogie. <laughs> uh, I, I, there's this. There was a list. You have a, a laundry list of something. I don't remember that one. Yeah, this is this is where it all started. You had done the Mesa Boogie service for forever. At, That's uh, right, I did. Yeah. Arnold Williams and stuff, and yeah, and uh, and and you you learned just Jesus. Never. <laughs> don't don't do that. <laughs> well, you heard it. You heard it here first. I might get to a few of these questions in the chat, sure. guys. I yeah. forgot about um, that. C Math is saying. Why does this? Why does it seem there's a wide gap between 20 watt amps and 100 watt amps? I, I think, I think he means in terms of what's available in the market. I think that's what that means. Or wattages oh. between the two. There's a million, I mean, 20, 30, that? 40, 50. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand, understand the question. Me neither. I, I I read that a couple of times, and I was thinking it meant. A gap in that, like a lots, lots of twenty watt amps, lots of hundred watt amps, not much in the middle. But well, I, you know, I, you know, there's some in the middle spots are a little weird. You know, like so, so you know, it, yes, fifty watt amp, simple, hundred watt amp, simple, twenty watt amp. Maybe you're using EL eighty four is kind of simple. Now the middle voltages are a little more. Are you going to use big tubes and like neuter it? Are you yeah. going to use are you going to cathode bias the big tubes? How are you? Wh how are you going to get the power exactly? You know, yeah. What are if you looking to like? Like in the thirty to forty watt region, for example, how do you how do you get there? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's cathode biasing. Sometimes yeah. it's a combination of lower voltage and cathode biasing. I guess. It... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the question. You know exactly. So. <laughs> yeah, we well, you know, know how to do it, but you know. Yeah, I think that's what, anyway. Well, let's move on. Gman Music, love Bruce's Mod Fifty amp and the modules that come with it. So many tones in one amp. So is that utilizing the same the modules to style concepts we were talking about before? Yeah, the Mod Fifty was a fifty watt two module head uh, that we made. That was the Agnator version long ago so it's kind of like the sin sin 50 i guess yeah right okay yeah cool uh bruce fixed a component that fried on my t 
TD module after someone spilled beer on my Sin 1. Thanks for your great customer service. Still gig regularly with my Mod 50. I bought at Tone Merchants. Yeah, well, look at that. Look at that. Cool. Uh, well, thanks. <laughs> there was a follow-up here about the... Let me try and find it. Here we go. Anthony DeVito is asking, Bruce, you talked about using an LED for a mute circuit. Did you mean in conjunction with LDRs? Yes. Yeah, the I, I, yeah, the LDR or the one that I mentioned specifically is called an H11F1. And that is an opto-isolator, but it is an FET. It's an LED and an FET in the package instead of an LED... And a resistor like an LDR would be, like a VAC tech or, you know, one of those little things. So it's faster. Right. That's why I like to use it. The LDRs might be a little bit slow to use for muting because they're slow. You know, the actual, what is it, a VAC tech or Clarex, whoever yeah. makes the, the ones that everybody, boogies use 5 million of them in every amp, you know. Oh, there's nothing like that stack. I love that. The, the stack of six. Oh, or, yeah. you know, yeah. Which one fails? The bottom the one. one. I had to do that. The first time I saw I opened the amp up, I was like, oh, my God, there's a stack of LDRs in here. And well, the one that failed was the bottom one. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, that, that's what uh, that's what uh, John, who was the Mesa Boogie Tech for years in Hollywood for 25 years, who works for me still on and off. Mm -hmm. uh he goes yeah and inevitably it's always the one at the bottom yeah and then the trick is not breaking the others right while you're trying to unsolder the stack and yeah. inevitably a lot of times you have to fix the others because you broke them mm -hmm. and, and those things goes, are like six bucks a piece now or more I yeah and he, he he's like yeah okay yeah <laughs> He has all the tricks though, because for 25 years he worked on nothing but Mesa boogies. So. Yeah, he knows. He, he, I, knows um, how, he knows how to like. He knows right away. What is it? You're, what's the problem? Oh, I know what it is. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. won't touch them. Uh, I get asked quite a lot to work on them, and I just I've heard too many bad stories from Don't guys like it. you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no, and Lyle, who's on yeah, the chat here. Yeah, Lyle's uh, he's friend. Don't touch him. Yeah, yeah. We got a I got a question here from Vince, which is. What is the difference sonically of tying the grids of both triodes in a 12AX7 together and using a shared cathode resistor and cap? So paralleling the two halves of a 12AX7? I think, yeah, I think this is the question. So uh, tying the grids together of both triodes right. and using a shared cathode resistor and cap um, I, I guess the, sonically the difference of using just a single triode, I guess, is the okay. Well, yeah, the, sonically, I mean, what's the difference? Uh, well, you have to adjust the values because now you have twice the current, so you wouldn't use a 220k plate resistor, you'd probably cut that in half. And same with the cathode. One of the things that nobody ever mentions is that the Miller capacitance doubles. Now you have two grids. So now you have potential high frequency differences also. Interesting. So there's, there's stuff. Um, try it if you like what it does. Cool. It doesn't double the gain. That might be a misconception that some people, it doesn't give you twice as much gain. You put them in series, you get twice as much gain. But put them in parallel, you're not going to get double the gain and i've seen it i mean i know people that do it the other thing getting it a little more gain oh yeah you get some more the yeah. other thing it does it can be quieter i mean if you have a whole tube to waste um because random noise can get canceled because they'll mix and potentially cancel noise not hum and buzz but more like you know normal tube hiss and stuff like that but okay I, I don't do it on anything I do because no, I, really I haven't played with it a hell of a lot. Mass so Dave, issues, I know naturalists used to do that a lot. Yeah, a Spitfire. But, or but, but there's different ways to do it. So I mean, you know, 
on a, a yeah yeah the matchless used to just you know tie the plates tie the imp, yeah, this, tie the cathodes tie the it's paralleled everything they just paralleled it all so that was a different scenario i've also seen it uh like jose used to on a few mods he would parallel the input grids but then have separate cathode resistors and uh you know caps for each half of the tube okay separate plate resistors for each half of the tube but then the output coupling caps of off the plate resistors would sum Oh, I see. I was going to ask you about the Jose. Yeah, so he would still he wouldn't have a shared plate load. He would actually, no. yeah, everything's oh. separate. It's like two stages just summed. So yeah, well, that's interesting. And I've never liked it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so what is that it's like? Like sonically, Dave? It, it that... gives you a little more gain. Okay, yeah. not a huge amount more gain, but some. Um, I don't know. It just, I it's hard to explain why I didn't like it. It just was like. Yeah, I don't know. Well, it's going to mix the two. You're going to get the bait, even though you have one with, you know, the base is cut because of the cathode components. When you mix them together, the base is still there. So there are identical like, stages. Yeah. Little huh, identical, identical components on each stage. Just so. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. A little more voltage output. Yeah. This well, way. try it then what you got yeah. and it wasn't that great give it yeah. a go vince and then you can you can report back there you go hey we got mark in the chat hey mark hey mark Good ah, to see hey you here man yeah uh we've got a question here from peter who actually has already made a comment in the chat about loving the ego hey bruce love your work and your amps which is which is super cool the question is from peter if a sound guy puts phantom power onto the amp some line output of a renegade amp will that hurt it no because we have blocking capacitors on all that stuff um one of the things i have seen and which is i mean if one of you guys out there in the world does something like that you have to use coupling caps on the xlr out just to block the dc that would come from the outside world from the phantom power, which is typically 48 volts. So the minimum, absolute minimum voltage on those caps should be 50 volts, but typically higher is safer. So yeah. I always use 63 volt caps for that reason. And that's what the Renegade has on it too. So yep. you're good. Makes sense. Uh, a few of the guys Bruce have actually mentioned in the chat about your your classes, and I know you've been running the amp building class for a little while, yeah. But you've actually started Quite a while, a, little a while. theory. You started, yeah. yeah, right. A lot longer than I thought. Actually, you've started a a theoretical a theory kind of class as well. Um, what are the uh, other than you know the theory class? You don't walk out with an amp. Do you actually cover a whole separate set of topics in that theory class than you would typically in the amp building class? Oh, yeah. Well, the amp building class uh, is just two days. You build the amp in one day, and we do a lot of the work ahead of time so you can do that. Um, and then the second day is just I teach you everything I know in six hours, and there's four guys sitting there, you know. Right. The other thing, that what I call the teaching-only classes – uh, we've done that kind of every couple of few years, um, because half the people that come are ones that already took the build class and they want to come back. Yeah. So we kind of build up, a, you know, enough people to, to do the classes, but it's typically there's, uh, uh, maybe 20, 25 people and we do it at a hotel meeting room, like a, uh, yeah, like a conference room or something. Yes, a conference yeah. room. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of like a greatly expanded version of what we do here in the build class on the one day. So we cover a lot more stuff. Um, and now you got 25 guys in the room, so they're all asking questions. So absolutely, it goes well beyond. Yeah, yeah. And that's two days also, but it's just no building. It's just at the hotel. 
You know the the yeah. learning curve that I mean you would have you've educated a lot of people right in this in this journey and have you found that with the learning curve that people go through there's there's something similar about a kind of like a key moment or a key thing that they've they grasp like that classic kind of aha moment you know like oh now I get it is it always a similar thing that people well we get not necessarily I say that because we get everything from guys that don't know anything. You can't hold a screwdriver. You yeah. Have to watch them. Um, <laughs> to, you know, seasoned repair technicians or guys that make amps and just figure come yeah. and hang out with Bruce and you can't help but learn something. Yeah. Um, so it's a pretty wide range of stuff. So no, I wouldn't say there's a specific aha moment for anybody. The thing is because like all of us, you guys and me, we all learned it the hard way and didn't have somebody sit us down for a weekend and explain it all. Yeah. So I know what they're going through trying to learn it. So I'm sympathetic to their situation. So I keep everything on a, uh, no, a human level. The last thing I want to do is talk over somebody's head. Why, why would you be here if you don't understand yeah. me? So I keep everything as simple as I can. And yeah, at that point, yeah, there are a lot of, you know, what you would call aha moments where they go, okay, I get that now. I've been wondering that for the last five years and you just explain. Yeah. So I've actually gotten good at explaining stuff just because I've done it for so many years now. Yeah. But that, I mean, that, that's a skill, right? Like the ability to explain something complex I in guess. a way that someone you know, I can understand it. That, that's, that in itself is a skill. I think it's experiencing that trying to learn it, you know, the hard way. And I know that's what, I know that's what they're doing. And if I can explain it in a way that makes sense to me and it'll make sense to them, hopefully. And it's worth it. So one of these days yeah. I'm just going to come and sit through one of these classes. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. <laughs> You'll be you'll put me to work. Yeah. yeah. Here. Talk yeah. to him for a minute. Help that guy. <laughs> Help that guy. Yeah, you never know. Me. You never know, Bruce. I might just turn up one day when, yeah. when I visit the States. I'll just turn up into a class one day. <laughs> That'd be cool. That would be fun. Do it. Jason, come on, let's go to Detroit. Let's do fun it. Fun times. <laughs> Not joking. Fun times. No. Yeah, Great no, food. I'm in, man. You can show me all the Oh yeah. Show me the ropes. There's some cool stuff. Uh, God, I lost my question here. Um, there was a question here for you, Bruce. I can't find it now. Yeah. Uh, you have to pick the right time to go, though. You can't. You don't want midsummer, right? You don't want when it's too cold. You got to You got to go spring or early fall. Yeah. <laughs> Which is when we I, do the classes for that reason, because yeah. of the weather. So. Yeah. Well, I came. So, so when was I? I was late May this year. Dave. That would have been a good time. Yeah. So I'm kind of planning on. We'll see how we go, right? But planning on doing the same thing again in 24. So yeah, we'll come here. Maybe do a, do a trip. To oh, I, might have to, I might have to fly out. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, let's. Yeah, we'll see if we can make it work. Okay. I found my question. It's from Matt, and it's Bruce. What was the inspiration behind the Tweaker 88 other than tonal options? There was a guy in Nashville, one of the popular studio guys, Larry Rolando. <laughs> you know Larry. Larry? Yeah, I remember Larry. How many thousand phone calls did he sure. make to you? Yeah. He uh, said, you know what thousand. we need in Nashville? We need an amp like this. And he kind of explained it, but it needs KT-88 power tubes. Really? He was the one that said, I said, okay, if we make this, will all your buddies buy them? And he's like, heck yeah. I don't even think he bought one. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that was it. It was because of, you know, not peer pressure, but customers said, we want a KT-88 amp. So I just made that. And, you know, it's funny. Everything I've always done, I always want to do 
something out. It's kind of an odd explanation, but I've always wanted whenever there's a new model of an amp, we need to fill a, a space in the um, pricing range or whatever. You know, you're just it's time for a new model. Yeah. What's going to make it a little bit different and make it kind of uniquely Agnator? So that's where some of the the little features come from, the Fender Marshall box thing and the the tight switch, just little stuff, usable features, but something that you'd look and go, oh, that's cool. It's not a, a silly thing and it's not a label that you don't get what it means. Like some other amp guys I know that label switches and you have no idea what the word means. But you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's part of, part of you the You know mystery. that guy? Yeah. Yeah. I know guys that do that. <laughs> yeah. So, but that's what the, that's what the tweaker 88 was. It was just or label it with a symbol. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Well, you know. So you know um, what we're talking about. That. I guess well, I guess I guess you know what uh, speaking of that, I think Orange was the originator of that bullshit. That's true. <laughs> right? You know, because yeah. they 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 had these weird insignia. <laughs> they do. Like, uh-huh. What is that supposed is that treble? Uh, maybe treble. Yeah. I'm not oh, sure. Treble clef treble and the bass clef. clef. Yeah, you know. and then they had the fist for the low cut thing. Yeah, that yeah, was the yeah. punch. Oh, yeah. yeah. Gee, <laughs> you need a cheat sheet to. Figure I like. Out I like the. Point. I like the concept behind this. The idea, but I think yeah. you got to explain it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah just actually, something. in this day and age, I've realized that you have to explain apparently everything. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, let's this talk been, about this, I, has I been know, I, this is a fun this is a fun one. Let's talk about troubleshooting. Oh troubleshooting uh, your yeah. amp. Because I know Bruce always jumps in on the threads on <laughs> you do my, my uh my group or whoever's group and yeah. And uh here's here's the important thing, people just Please don't listen to anyone else. <laughs> you can listen to Bruce. You can yeah. listen to me. You can listen to Jason or some other qualified individual, but please don't listen to the average person that's going to post a response that is absolute utter bullshit. <laughs> uh, yeah. because, because you'll get 50 responses of utter bullshit that isn't correct. Yeah. And 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 it it's generally much easier than anyone's you know it's oh that's tubes or this and that and no it's your Wi-Fi router that's just bleeding into your amp <laughs> yeah, in the room sitting right next to your you amp. know it, yeah. it, it it it's it's like whenever I talk to people via email and stuff it's like okay so you're have I'm having this problem with my amp blah 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 whatever it is okay. Unplug everything from your amplifier. Plug the guitar straight into your amp, speaker cable to the cabinet, and tell me, and with and most important thing, with your guitar off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, whatever you're telling me in this email, is it exhibiting these problems? Well, no, it, it just sounds like hiss now, and there's no hum or anything, and this okay. Now play your guitar. Oh yeah, there's a lot of hum now. That's not the amp. Yeah, that's your pickup hum. Move away that's from your the pickup amp. hum. Move away from your amp. Move around in the room. Spin in a circle. Lay on your back. Figure out where the guitar is the quietest that exists. Yeah, there's all there's always. Well, is a there pen. anything I can do about that? No, there isn't. No, not really. Now, There's always a pattern with the stuff, right? shield in your room. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Put yourself in the middle box. Well, there's two, um, you know, when they do this on the forum stuff, where you're talking about, yeah. where we try to help, you know, most of the guys are just guitar players, and yeah. we have to be, you know, patient and sympathetic to their, their it, it, plight. To, to their plight, yeah, to their... Yeah. But it's the repair, it's the would-be... Got repair guys that are just learning, just like all of us, but they interject comments without the knowledge to give a correct answer. That's yeah, and yeah. That's where. Well, you know, maybe it's a power it, transformer. It's always transformers, filter caps, change all the tubes. No, change the tubes. All of them are not bad. 
one might be bad, but don't chain, don't go out and spend $300 on all those tubes to find out your effects loop jack was dirty. So, right. You know, there's that, when you say troubleshooting, there's a, there's a, a procedure you would use, but yeah. they don't do that. And that's where I was, I was going, you know, so yeah, plug straight in. Yeah. Cable straight to the amp. Does it do what you, you're saying it's doing? Yes, it does. It's fluctuating up and down in volume. Okay, you have an effects loop on your amp? Put a jumper cable in the effects loop. Does it fix the problem? Yes, that fixes the problem. Okay, <laughs> clean your effects loop jacks with some deoxit and, you know, or contact cleaner or something and shove a cable in and out of it a few times and then you should be golden. Yeah, you know? and that's such a common thing. That should yeah. be... That should be in every owner's manual, you know. And then the other the other issue is the other issue, at least with my amps, the other issue is the the amp's not it won't light up. It's it's dead. It won't light up. I've I've looked at the fuse, it's fine. <laughs> looked at it. Yeah. You're looking at the wrong fuse. Yeah. The mains fuse is located in the slide out tray of the AC right. inlet jack. I've said this a million times. I'm just going to say it here in case anyone's watching. <laughs> All the main, if your light is out in your amp, that means your mains fuse has blown. The mains fuse in my amp is in a slide out tray in the AC inlet jack, not a round fuse holder next to it. Yeah. It's and, very true, Dave. And, and if you blew that, don't put another fuse in. Yeah, it's going to blow again. Yeah. <laughs> Don't put a bigger fuse in. It's no. going to still blow. Yeah. <laughs> Most likely that. you have a one. If it's a tube rectifier, good chances you have a bad tube rectifier Two, If there's no tube rectifier, there's a good chance you have a bad power tube. Ninety nine percent of the time, those are the two causes. <laughs> Yeah, quite. I, I find quite often with that stuff, and I see it in all the forums, right? Not just not just where I've had questions come to me, but it's it's often when they first get the amp and they connect it into this complex rig that they've got, and then you get the oh, I've got a hum or a buzz or whatever, right? Hmm. So there's that, which is Dave, as you say, right? Just strip it right back, test the amp just by itself first, or they've just bought another new piece of gear that they didn't tell you about, right? It's, oh, been yeah. added in, it's been added into the rig. Yeah. That you only find out after, you know, an hour of back and forward. Oh, so oh, I, I, have the, I have the next one to talk about. <laughs> so there's many pieces of gear now that do a four cable method, you know, okay. stuff in front, stuff behind. Is it Most all those pieces of gear have no uh, thought about grounding. You Generally, if you have something in front and something behind and it's one piece of gear, you have a ground loop. More than one. Uh, uh, <laughs> and so uh, you have to fix that ground loop. So you're going to have hum. Not only hum, on the highest gain channels, you might have a whistle. Yeah. Yes. Like yes. A, a, a oscillation, a whistle. Uh, yeah. uh, and that's because you, you know, have a ground loop, essentially. I've, I've talked to people about that. Even the simplest of things that has a like insert loop and they can put part of it in front and part of it behind. I don't know why these companies don't actually I know. talk about this issue. I mean, yeah. if you have an ISP decimator pedal, G-string decimator pedal, mm -hmm. part of it goes in front of the amp, part of it goes in the loop of the amp. Well, guess what? You create a ground loop by even using the noise reduction unit. Yeah, you make the noise. Isn't, so, isn't it the irony of that? Is I find amazing, right? So you need a, a like. I mean, a simple way to do it is an isolation transformer just in front of the amp. Uh, you know, a little audio transformer. It's like, it's uh, like the noise gate is the noise gate is needed because is causing just... the noise problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and that always baffles uh, why it's just so bizarre. I just find that so that bizarre. Issue. Uh, yeah. um, don't understand. We we got a couple of super chats here. What I'm gonna I'm gonna get to to uh, jump the queue here. So this is hey Rob. Hey uh, Rob. We know Dave's favorite amp, which is a 6850 watt plexi. And Jason and Bruce, your number one 
go to aim. Oh, you go first, Bruce. Hey, you guys answer. I'm going to pee. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite, you know? God. Something that, uh... You know, I kind of, I don't have that amp. I don't have that thing, that one that I got, and it's the most amazing amp I've ever heard in my life, and that became my, you know, my girlfriend. <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have that. Yeah. Strangely enough, um, that's not that's not uncommon. If you if you're a builder, I remember this conversation with Kyle at KSR, and he was the same. He's like, oh, I don't own any amps because I've just built on my own. You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, a lot like Dave's got the the Golden Marshall, and of course he could build one to be just like that, or pretty darn close, I'm sure. But it's just not the same as that one because no, that one's got the mojo, and it's you know, if you make a copy of it, well, then it's a copy. But that one's got the yeah. magic. Yeah. But I don't, I don't have that magical amp. I don't even have. The first, you know, I've built a lot of different things over the years, and I didn't keep any of the first ones I made. Like I didn't have an IE4, and I don't have a TOL amp, and I don't have the original modules, and I don't know. I don't. I don't have anything like that either. I've yeah. most of the first stuff that I built, I ended up selling, yeah. or I've I've torn it apart because I wanted the parts. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. Um, but I think the to answer the question, Rob, for me, it would be. Just because it's old and you know special, I've got a sixty-nine fifty-watt plexi. Okay. Uh, it's a nineteen eighty-seven T. It was a so it's a tremolo amp. Oh, cool. Um, which Dave actually uh, helped me restore with some good information and tips. So that would have to be it, right? Because that's a um, you know it's a it's a it's a golden piece of history and a reference amp, and I would certainly never ever 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 sell it. So. Right. Well, that's the um, other part is the historical value and the yeah you know yeah, there's certain amps I won't sell uh, yeah. uh, although apparently what happens with my amps is that I own one and then someone comes through and wants it yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no they want that specific that one, particular right? one man that particular one yeah and I'm like ah oh, okay. yeah okay. Yeah, you know, of course. And, and, then, and, then you, and you sell, you know, someone like Darren Malakian from System of a Down or something is just like, I want that B100. No, I want that one. <laughs> You're like, I'll get you one. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay. One. Sure. Yeah. Well, you're going to say yes to that every time, aren't you? you well, know? it's not yeah. an irreplaceable vintage no. thing. You can just build another, make another one, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, know? I've sold a, a ton of things over the years that maybe i regret but i i have a nice little stable of things i won't sell now yeah my 50 watt marshall i won't sell my vox ac30 i won't sell right uh, my high watt i won't sell yeah and i don't think i'll sell my uh that uh bandmaster that's i was gonna say that bandmaster yeah. there yeah with the harmonic tremolo oh, no, no, no. man uh -huh. those sound good yeah, yeah, that's stuff you can't, you know, and 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 like, I, I've narrowed it down to those pieces that I won't sell. I mean, I own a B one hundred. I own a. I mean, I mean, I own several of my own amps. Yeah, that I keep around for loners and things. Right. Uh, I don't own that many of them, but I own some. Yeah, yeah. that's what Jason and I were just saying. We don't own anything. We don't <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I don't own any of the early stuff. Yeah. Like the first day, I don't want to say something. You know? there you go. Yeah, you're gonna have another one too. <laughs> yeah, you know, I hope so, man. A red small box. Yeah, a red small box, man. Yeah, that, that'll be killer to match my red Jakey Lee 100. <laughs> um, or maybe you should get the other one I'm making. Oh wait, I didn't say anything <laughs> about that. We'll talk about that after. Yeah. Um, Lyle can relate. Tears of joy. <laughs> 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 well, I can definitely relate to that. Uh, it's almost always much simpler than everyone makes it out to be. Yes. You know, it's like one failed preamp tube or or simply your router is bleeding into your amp. Yeah. 
you know, they send, me, they send me a video and I hear this constant pulse. Like, boop, boop, boop. I go, uh, that's not the amp. Amp wouldn't, be co- <laughs> amp wouldn't be so precise, you know? Yeah, right. Take your mobile phone off the top of your amp. Yeah. <laughs> or, 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 you know, the Wi Fi router sitting behind your amp. Mm. Yeah. Or your yeah. cell phone sitting on top of your amp. Yeah. 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 Uh, 10, 999 from Shay. Thanks, man. Yeah. No, uh, no question, but man, I appreciate that. Come on, Shay, ask something. Yeah, you should come you on. You paid the money, you should ask something. Yeah. Um, moving on. So, Tim, hey, Tim, um, and I'm good, good to see you in the chat. Uh, Tim's asking, uh, Bruce, tell us about the tour master head. So, Tim's got one, had it several years. Don't understand why more people don't have them. Because they weigh 80 pounds. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that one was when I first started working with boutique amps long, long ago, before there was a line of Agnator stuff. That was all my fault. Yes, it was. And uh, <laughs> he resents I, me you more. Know, the guy that owns oh, boutique man. amps said, hey, we have this stuff. We want to do this. We want to do that. And Dave went, eh, I don't want to do that. But I know a guy. So he introduced me to boutique amps distribution, those, which is great. You know, it was a cool thing, but they were very much involved with guitar center. So they, they, he said, well, guitar center wants kind of, it's not an exclusive amp, but they started coming over to the factory when I would be there and they would have all these ideas for stuff features that they would want on an amp. Right. They said, we want an amp with every feature that any human can ever think of. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And they would say, can you do this? Can you do that? And I foolishly came up with that four position power switch per channel. You're on the back of the tour master. Oh yeah. You can set. What does it do? Channel. Well, there's a four, there's a one, two, three, four position slide switch on the back panel Uh to do 150 25 or 10 watts you know where that came from if Mm. i'm assuming it's the same thing it's not actually it's not the same thing it's not the one where you switch to 50 turns off two tubes then go to the the oh okay this actually that's why the transformer well this one the tour master the tra- that's why the transformer weighs like you know 18 pounds and it's as big as a shoebox but it's <laughs> it has four high voltage output wow taps. really there's like 450 350 200 whatever they are Insane. and a bunch of big relays and you can when you switch channels you can set any channel and it'll <laughs> It'll switch over to that voltage on the power transformer. It's completely nuts. It works, and it was really cool, but it was completely insane to do that. And then all the other endless features and four channels. And so I I will say it was kind of Guitar Center was the one that sort of pushed us to. Sort of, sort of like a, 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 a TLO 100 on steroids. Yeah, it's like that with a million other yeah. switches and yeah. stuff. So and you, had, cool. you have like four four different bias adjustments and everything that goes with it. Like, How did we do that? Uh, it wasn't cathode bias, I'm assuming. The no, bias one. no, I think the bias was only on the highest power, but then when you switch down to the lower power, then we could just have it preset because you're well within the operating range of the tubes. You know, you're not going to. Uh-huh. Yeah, so it's it's just kind of we made it work. So when you, the, you know the power supply drops down to three fifty or three hundred volts with four EL thirty fours, you know you could put the bias anywhere you want. So so it, I think insane, those were man. all preset. I'll have to send you a schematic. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> I'd love to see it. Yeah. I'd love to see it. I'll, I'll kick back with a beer later on today and have a look yeah. at. it. Um, <laughs> I love looking. At it, it's great. It's great to look. You know what? That's that's, that's the fun, man. You find some great schematics. 
You know, I, I think there used to be more. I, I, I honestly think there was a time in the internet where, where there actually used to be more information, and I think it's harder and harder to find it now. Interesting. Um, is that you know, because there's almost like too much information? You don't know where to go. No, now. no, no. Some of it has disappeared. Some of it's oh, okay. like the you know websites or forums or certain things that had information on them. It's like the, the Metro you know? forum, Dave. You know, like the the old Metro forum, which the original when it was originally the thing. All the attachments are gone. Stuff. Yeah, all the because attachments it, are gone because it like it crashed or whatever. Yeah, right? and. Then, and you know, I, I I remember in the in the uh, heyday of or in the heyday the, or the the original days of the internet, right? You had all these uh, you know Usenet, yeah, forms, oh, yeah, man, forms yeah. and uh, little things news, on there, the, the news groups, the, the news, and stuff, groups yeah, news groups, yeah, news groups, right? Oh, yeah. And man, yeah. there was a bunch of good information, like like There's some good good underground shit there. there. I remember I remember there was some stuff from Dan Russell in there. And all yeah. sorts of good, good stuff um and you know all that stuff disappeared it's gone you know and 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 now i don't know i think i think our society in general is becoming less and less you know like um what i want to say um uh, maybe maybe this obsession is an old man's thing you know what i mean <laughs> like at this point <laughs> You know, I, I don't know if I see a lot of young people <coughs> are, are getting this crazy about, you know, it's hard enough to find uh, people that know how to use tools these days. <coughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't understand when, when I was a kid, I messed around with tools, right? You know, you, yeah. you, you took things apart, you put them back together. You knew how to use a hammer, a screwdriver, yep. a, a yep. saw, you know, some basic, just <clears throat> basic things, right? And, and that you messed around with as a kid. You're mm -hmm. building something or doing something with a saw. Maybe you fucked it all up, but you were, you were, you were doing something. And now, I mean, the kids are staring at, you know, the internet or their video game and they're not using their hands and they're not using this 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 thing this, this thing and and you know it, it's like and some information is lost some basic information like how to change a fuse i had a i had a guy ask me to make a video of how to change <laughs> his fuse i'm not joking this is a real thing he asked me for a video on how to change his fuse i didn't do it but yeah. Everyone wants a video. I'm like, I, I mean, I'm like, I, I don't even know how to even respond to this. There's, there's this thing about, um, and we go, we're gonna like sound like old, old, old. No, I don't want to sound like an old thing, but no, 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 but an old um, teaser or something. But the, the thing is, is that I think there's valuable information that I do believe that uh, you know kids should have today. I agree. Still. There's I think that basic... I've asked this question. I've oh. asked this question of people of that generation, and their response normally yes. is, "Well, I don't need to know, right? Because because when I need to know, I'll just look it up." Yep. Yeah, but <laughs> Google. Mm. I'll just do a YouTube video. Like I'll look at YouTube at that moment in time that I need to know it. So there's no point in knowing it now. And I was like, "What? That doesn't make any sense." Yeah. Like, well, what if that information disappears? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I don't, I, you, you know, you learn something by messing around like that. Yeah. You, you just learn some basic skills. Well, they don't know. have shop class in school anymore, yeah. I assume, you know, all that kind of stuff. Well, well, like, you know, it's just like, if that's the concept, then when a, when a child is learning to walk, oh, fuck it. I'm not going to walk. I'm just gonna wait till later. I'll learn how to do it on YouTube <laughs> when I need to. Come on, <laughs> you know that's bullshit. <laughs> that's a good one, man. I mean, I like that's just that. bullshit. I, like that. I mean, yeah. uh, I don't need to learn to speak. I'll just figure it out. Like when I need to respond. I'll... Yeah, right. Exactly. I don't. Yeah, I'll figure it out later. <laughs> well, there was the other day I was reading on. It was a Facebook thing, but a guy was saying that he went to the store and the 
the teenager couldn't figure out how to give them change, mm. which we've all run into. The donuts, and, right? Oh, the donut thing? Yeah. And, yes. And I yeah. said, you know, they ought to take one, when kids are in sixth grade, they should take one day and just teach them how to make change in elementary school. It's a basic concept, but if you never do it and then you go get a job at McDonald's and they throw you out there or a place that doesn't do it for you, yeah. It's well, just man, I mean, if you, if you front up anywhere with cash these days, you get a strange look like, like what? You want to pay with cash? Yeah. It's, there's it's some weird. of that here. I, there's still most places take cash here, but. Oh, they'll take it, but it's just not what they, you know. 99% of the transactions, someone's tapping something, you know, like. I, I like cash still. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, you know, there's 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 a lot of people that'll pay me in cash for repairs and things. I just like a pocket full of cash. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. You know. All, all, all my repairs are cash. Yeah. yeah. Same, yeah. man. When I tell 100%. Them. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, Otherwise, put it in your pocket, go to the grocery store, and buy the groceries with it. Yep, yep. there you go. There you go. Hundred uh, percent. Shay right. did actually follow up with a super chat, so we're sending a super for the channel hitting eight k on the stream. Wow, how about wow. that? Wow, real time. Um, <laughs> cheers, legend. Thanks, man. <laughs> um, that's cool. I didn't realize that that had happened. So that's cool. Hey, when are you coming on Tone Talk? Yeah, man. When is that happening? Send me it's, your email. Let's, I'll let's, send it to you, though. Yeah, send it to me. I'm going to badger you, and you're going to come you're on. You're going to happen. Ready? It should happen, man. It should yeah. happen before the end, of the end of the year, hopefully. Come on. Uh, yeah, almost 200 people in the chat. Well, awesome. what, what are we, 198? Stoked to see these chats grow. Yeah, man, it's cool. Uh, that's good. Bruce, for the... Yeah. Well, man, yeah. every time you come on, Dave, it's always... <laughs> Almost two times more than a normal normally. Um, what is I the always, ET five? Sorry, you go. Go. It, no, we can ask the question. I'll talk about oh, it later. Sorry. Oh, what was uh, what's an question EG for you, Bruce? Module? What was the EG five module based on? It's an EG four with a little more low and high end, if I remember correctly. I think we changed two parts. I don't even remember exactly what that one was, but. Uh, in fact, I think Jeff Hilligan, who worked for us for a short time, oh, yeah, might have just I taken one Jeff. and did a couple things and went, oh, that sounds cool. So we made it a, a right. new model. So you can take an EG4 and make it an EG5. Okay. And change three parts. Cool. Like most guitar amps are. Yeah. <laughs> change three parts and it's a new model, you know? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Revision two. Mm -hmm. I changed two caps. Yeah. Yep. 100%, man. Um, a lot of tone in those two caps, though. Uh, PF is asking Hey, Jason, Dave, Bruce, thanks for the show tonight. No worries, man. Recommendations for bias on a 72 Super Reverb, a good blend of tube life and clean headroom. Any thoughts? Uh, the Super Reverb? I mean, like maybe. 35 like, milliamps or something like a fender super reverb yeah 35 somewhere in there yeah 30 to 40 <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's there are things that affect that you know there isn't like some magic number that just works for yeah. all 6l6 amps there's you know there's plate voltage and you know there's stuff there are other factors that affect that but in general, they all end up right in about in the mid thirties. Yeah, I mean, in general, in general, most amps end up well, unless it's a really low low plate voltage amp. Yeah, and end up between thirty to forty milliamp. Yeah, you know, and it's not and, that critical. And anything you like between thirty and forty is probably just yeah. fine. And you can go lower. I know Fender sure. and Soldano and, you know, they set stuff yeah. at 25. Yeah. Probably so they could just put any old tube in there and not worry uh, about it. Not. The Soldano's at 25. I never quite understood that. Um, Are they still bars? Because, because when, you, when you boost it up a little bit, especially with the 5881 power tubes, 
mm-hmm. when you when you pull it up to like 5881s for some reason i really like hot a little hotter mm-hmm. i really like I more around 40 that's how yeah. you bought the duty shelly isn't it yeah that? and the mm-hmm. 5881s in general they just sound kind of better when they're pushed a little hotter mm-hmm. um and um in a soldano if you bring it up to like 40 that's uh, probably pushing it a little bit on on the plate voltage and everything but it's great yeah it, now, it, nice. all of a sudden it just like smooths out a little bit and gets kind of rich and nice and uh, yeah. oh it's good 25 is too low, too low too low yeah well it's going to sound cold sounds fuzzy sounds cold yeah. now he did have 500 and 500 volts well, the he did. Line. He did, but which we did too. You know. I find that it's more really like 480. Oh, okay. It's not really 500. I mean, I've seen some that were that, but mm, it's more averages around 480. Huh. Okay. Uh, the, so uh, to answer the question, uh, mid 30s on this question. Yeah, mid 30s. Yeah, mid 30s. Probably uh, a super reefer. Probably mid 30s. Yeah. Yeah. And David, the new. The boutique amps SLOs are they biased? Cool 35. as well. Okay, so that's back to yeah. back in the sweet spot, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robert's asking, at least I did hope. you guys? Sorry, at least I hope. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, theoretically, <laughs> that's what they're supposed like to be biased at, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. As I've heard you say before, well, it's not my company, but you know, that's not my company. <laughs> I know they do ask you though, Dave. Yeah, um, I'll sit there and check mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, man. Because uh, they burn but, in, you know. So, 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 you know, they're biased and then they're burned in. You need to check them again. Yeah. Totally, because tubes shift and change. They do, they do, don't they? They settle in. Settle in. Uh, uh, did you guys oh, ever do any tech now though? So, so I don't have too much problems anymore. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Great yeah. tech. Ted. Awesome. Okay. Uh, did you guys ever do anything with Randy Jackson from Zebra? You know, I don't know anything. No, but that. I love the band. <laughs> I Not me. Bruce? No? Okay. No. All good. Um, Tracy Norton is here. Tracy. Tracy, what's up? Hey, man. Is that your circuit board guy? Yeah. Oh, cool. Tracy's one of the guys that, Dave, you, you introduced me to when I came to visit, which was uh, we went and had a yeah, we had a lunch. very cool lunch at the local pub. Yeah. Yeah, talk shop for a bit. Yeah, when um, you come back, we'll have to do that again. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I've been following you. So, Tracy, so I know you, you, uh, you've been posting a few things on Facebook. It looks like you're out, out and about in that, in that four-wheel drive vehicle of yours. Oh, he, Tracy Don't loves think. going out. Tooling around in the, I don't know what you want to call it, <laughs> out here, in the world. Here, you know, here we call it the outback. The outback there, and, and if yeah. you're in Australia, it'd be the outback. Yeah, yeah. Uh, outback here is a steakhouse that's bad. <laughs> yeah. Is that an Australian like? Is it an Australian steakhouse or something? Is it, or is it just? Well, I, I don't do know about that. that, but it's 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 called the outback or you okay. know, house or whatever and it's they not, have you know. an outback in australia they do yeah i was there in australia years ago uh, yeah. and i remember one of one of our friends said hey do they have outback there and i said i don't know you know it's, it's i would think not and sure enough within the next half hour we drove past an outback steakhouse in australia yeah. which uh, i thought yeah. was kind of funny actually <laughs> yeah it's 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 weird. not all that it's cracked up to be. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's okay, but you know, yeah. Um, question here from they aren't human. Hey Bruce, I have an Armageddon half stack. Really enjoy it. Would a variable negative feedback mod be easy or worthwhile? Uh, it's as e- it's easy if you know how to do it. If you don't know how to do it, it's really hard. <laughs> Uh, is it worthwhile? I don't know. Do, do you not have enough features on the Armageddon yet? Um, but it is just a one wire thing. I mean, email me if you want to know how to do it. But I would say it's not worth it. You're going to 
change the the character and the feel of the amp um but you can try it it's not hard so right. send me an email i'll send you a schematic and tell you what to do yeah cool well, there you, you go you wreck your amp don't call me <laughs> <laughs> reach out to bruce one it's a one-time only offer yeah uh no live stream would be complete without an irx question for Dave. oh fuck oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised. You know, the first you know you're never going to escape these questions, man. Uh, some FX units have a pedal level input. Some have line level. Is it okay to send IRX's balanced output to either type? What unit anymore has a line level input? That's what I'd like to know. Uh, I mean, like if you're talking about... Uh, old gear. I mean, yeah, I don't. I don't know of any new gear yet that really has a line level input. Um, well, only only a line level. Uh, can you send the the balanced output into a line level input? You yes, you could. It might be a little low in level. Uh, it's totally dependent on what you're sending it into, on if it can compensate for that low level. I you know. There's a lot more to this than than just uh, what you're asking here. Can you plug it? It won't hurt it. it. You can plug yeah. it in, <laughs> but it's only it's only like I mean the line the the balance output is only well if it's balanced if if it's unbalanced if you're going unbalanced out from the balanced output, you know you're only getting uh, I don't know depending on where your knobs are, 150 millivolts or something. Yes. So, so that's guitar level. Yeah. You know, it's designed to go into a mic preamp out the balanced. Yeah. Out. So he goes on to say that the IRX direct into my door sounds great. It's the most amp like my door has ever sounded. And that's including real amps with a reactive load. So there you go. That's cool. Awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we, when we first did it, I, I, a beat it. I was in Pete Thorne's room and we were a being it to amps with a reactive load. And we were just <clears> going back and forth between all sorts of different amps. We're like, can we mimic this? Yep. We mimic that. Yep. <laughs> cool. It's a cool piece of tech. Yeah. yeah. I'm I yet, to, I'm yet to try. Yeah. Me neither, man. It's a really I'll... cool piece of tech, man. It's It'll happen. Really cool. I want to. I want to pull it apart. <laughs> Have a look yeah, good luck. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to see um, a bunch of surface mount components. Total blue inside. Yeah. Um, Barry H is asking, what is a good DIY amp kit to Bruce's. start building amps? I was going to say, looking for something in the Marshall JCM 800 territory. Thanks and love all your guys' amps. Yeah, cool, man. So, Bruce, you're now offering the your amp the amp building class amp as a kit, right? Yeah. Yeah. We haven't started shipping them yet, but, uh, I, I, his Barry's comment that says an amp building kit to start building amps concerns me a little bit. On Maybe the start level with a champ. Yeah. Um, you know, if you know stuff, already and you've done things okay but our our kit is not a beginner's thing I mean, we'll have great instructions and a video and everything but that doesn't hold your hand and correct your mistakes so yeah um again he can email me beagnator at aol.com um email me and we'll talk about it and uh otherwise there are lots of great kits mojo weber um, they're all doing 800 kits too, aren't they? Like a 2204 or something. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's probably half a dozen people selling yeah. kits like that. But if you've never done it, I mean, I make a champ first, just start really small. Yeah. And then move up. Yeah. Yeah. It's an ambitious thought, but you don't want to get in over your head. Um, yeah. Okay. One thing we're doing, because that was the scariest thing for me about selling kits. <clears throat> we did it once years ago, and the 
after the after they build it and it doesn't work, yeah, that became it's a pain in the ass, right? a difficult thing to deal with. So mm-hmm. this time, so I wanted to sell the kits again because we get so many requests for people that can't come to a class, but they want an amp like that. So this time, you build it. We'll try to help you. If you fail. You pay shipping both ways, ship it to me, and for a hundred bucks, I'll make it work. So we're offering kind of like Heath Kit. Man, okay. This is this is the this is the insurance policy. It's yeah. Like, so if, if you, if you, if you fuck it up, you, you really you really have a have a have yeah, you really want to cause yourself problems, don't you? Nah, you know. Hey, well, you know what the good thing about that, Bruce, is like if you just go straight, you could answer a couple of rudimentary questions and then just jump straight to the send me the amp because you'll end up inevitably <laughs> spending hours and hours oh, yeah. trying to remotely yeah, you know. just get them to send you the amp. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's the way well, you it. send me some pictures, photographs, and then we'll decide if you're going to be able to make it work or not, you know? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Anyway, there you go. So Mike is, Mike is here. Hey, man. Um, theory class is great. And Steve is asking, uh, Bruce, are you going to, are you still going to have a more advanced teaching only class in the future? So I think that's a reference to the theory class we were just talking yeah. about. You know, we just did, we actually did two in September, so we probably won't do them again till next fall, but yeah, we'll do them again. It's a lot of fun and I like doing it. So. Yeah. You'll, you'll time it for when Dave and I visit. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, we'll just sit in the background. We'll sit in the back and be really <laughs> annoying. Wait, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll figure out what's the most annoying question we can ask. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, you want to talk about standby switches, right? No, I'm kidding. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Is the standby <laughs> switch really needed? <laughs> no. Let's do that. I'd... Let's do that. Um. I love Dave. this one. I, I get sorry. I'm gonna, I just something oh. popped in my head. Uh, yeah, I love this it. one. It's like I I plugged my amp in. Whoa, no, I forgot to plug my speaker cabinet in. I played through my amp for a second. It oh, seems yeah. to be okay. Yeah, uh, but uh, is it okay? Not to worry. I'm like, yeah. does it work? Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's better that they ask though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of a silly thing, but if it's if it's still actually functioning and making sound, it's probably just fine. Yeah, you didn't you're yeah. fine. You didn't you didn't mess it up. Yeah. Well, the thing is with that kind of stuff, which is part of troubleshooting, when as a guitar player, you forget to plug the speaker in, you turn the amp on, you turn it up a little bit and you get you don't get any sound. What does every guitar player do? Turn it up more? Turn it all the way up. Well, okay, that's not really problem solving. So no. that's a, a thing that I wish more of them would. Hey, here, the... Here's a good tip. When you turn the amp on, turn it up and listen for hiss. If you're yeah. getting hiss out of your cabinet, you're good. This is the, this is, and then you can turn it back down and play whatever volume you're going to play at. But that that the, listen for the this hiss. This is the best tip, man. I mean, if you don't hear the hiss at all, don't play. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't it's play a, the guitar. It's, it's like when you when you finish when you first power on an amp that you've built or whatever, right? So you might put it on a load and put it on the scope, whatever. Or inevitably, you just plug the cabinet in. If that's what I'll do, I'll just turn the volume up. If yeah. I, you hear a hiss? Okay. Now we can yeah, start playing it. Yeah. Through it. it yeah. might work. Yeah. You don't turn it up to 10 and plug your guitar in and go like that. <laughs> well, if, if you're just a guy with a guitar, you do, which is so well, harmful. Can. It's such an awful thing. But it yeah, that's what they do. Might not survive, but you can. Yeah. This question here, Dave, is about is, you, is there a, fa- a 1987 50 watt JMP? Is there a favorite? era or configuration that you have cathode man you know it's just like what is a 19 uh, what i would like to know is tell me what a 1987 spec is yeah because um uh over the years that spec entirely changed 
Yep. So, like I saw, Jason, you had uh, you had a fifty watt, nineteen eighty seven that is totally the lead spec. Uh, yep. What what you would call lead spec, you know, Marshall. But a lot of the older nineteen eighty sevens are not totally lead spec. So I uh, I mean. What do you want it to do? I mean, like, uh, you know, the, there's been 50 watt amps. Let's just call them 50 watt amps. There's been 50 watt amps that are part, you know, that have solid state rectifiers that have been partially uh, JTM 45 spec, but higher filtering. Then there's some that are lead spec. So then there's some that are sort of lead spec, but not quite all the way. <laughs> and then, I mean, it's all over the map. They are. So they are. To find one that hasn't been touched in 40 years and somebody didn't change something is pretty rare right. too. True. And and but even 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 Marshall is like, oh, we're out of that, so let's just put that in. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's I mean, not like got... they were building, you know, for the future. They were just making stuff with what they had in stock. What in they had, future. right? So I would I would suggest this is a, it sounds like you've got a, a kit build or something like that. Um, try the different try the different circuits and see which one you like yourself. Right? Yeah, what's a sixty seven version? I don't even know. I don't even know what that means. You know, um, like uh, that's probably very similar to a um, JTM forty five version, I would imagine, but solid state rectifier, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Do you have a schematic of it by chance? And what do you want it to sound like? That's a better question. This is it. I, I would just suggest trying a few of the different. I, I look. I look at it. There's two specs to me. There's lead spec and there's JTM forty five spec. And I, I don't uh -huh. think there's anything else. Now there can be a solid state rectifier instead of a tube rectifier. There can be some slight variances in filtering, but to me, there's those two specs, and I don't really there's occasionally you get one in between you know but in the transitional era whatever, yeah 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 that's cool what do we think of the uh the 18 and 20 watt jmps like the 9074 combos that marshall had the 20 watt heads were awesome that's the Those lead and really base cool. 20 that yeah lead and base 20 those were mm -hmm. awesome sounding yeah. um they ran the el 84s to inches of their life <laughs> yeah i mean I'm hot. it's like 17 you know like 17 18 percent dissipate watts or oh god they're just like melting <laughs> no. but man they sounded good that way <laughs> yeah i think we're all fans is yeah. the answer to the question. And in fact, a lot of my 20 watt power sections, we run them that hot too. And it's like not quite that hot, but yeah, not far and, off. And, it, and yes, yeah, that's pushing it some. Surprisingly, they've worked for a lot of years. And, mm. you know, yes, you got to replace tubes every six months or so, but <laughs> they're, 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 well, <clears throat> they're still relatively cheap. Yeah. Sounds good while it's going. Uh, we've got a question here. I think this is a question for you, Dave. It says, hi, guys. Enjoying the show. Dave, I have a JJ20, a PT V2, and a Runt 20. Is it possible to shorten preamp tube life by pushing boosts or overdrives into the front end? No. 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 I mean, you, you know, to be honest, your preamp tubes, unless they fail – Gonna last a really long time. I mean, we we still see amps today that have original preamp tubes from 1965 in them, and they're still functioning perfectly fine, mm -hmm. and they sound great. Uh, I I don't. People are always like, "Oh, should I retube my whole amp?" I go, "Wait a minute, you don't have to retube the whole amp." Yeah. Can you put some fresh power tubes in? Yes. Well, preamp tubes aren't under any stress preamp tubes, tubes are probably always. just perfectly fine and in fact often the tubes that you might have or in my amps you might have had some you know the good era of chinese 12ax7s and stuff don't change those 
Yeah. Those are great. You can't get them anymore. So leave them alone. Don't throw them away. Don't change them. Yeah. Just leave them in there. Yeah. They're they're fine. They're fine. You know, Retube the Product on the front end. Change one tube. Yeah. Don't, you just don't. change them when they need changing, and you can do it individually, right? Yeah. Retubing yeah. a whole lamp is advice that's dished out by people that sell tubes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Power, I mean, power too. I like you know people. Yeah, well, like twenty one amps. Be like the twenty one amps you have here in uh, uh, the Blund nineteen seventy one. Yeah, change those every six months because <laughs> we do push those awfully hard. So. I mean, if you only play it once a year, though, maybe you don't have to do that. So, you know, if you're playing. Yeah, this is it. And you'll know, right? You'll know when it needs replacing, I think. Uh, Thrill87 says, hi, guys. Bruce, I've had your hand-wired amp, the SW45, Sweetwater exclusive, for about 10 years now. Totally awesome, extremely reliable, never broken down. Dave, did you have something to do with this? Is that (laughs) something you worked on together? Didn't that have something to do with this? Yeah, actually, I did it, and then it went uh, to you guys, and then Dave tweaked it up, made it sound better. I don't remember exactly what you did. I don't remember what I did either. I remember Gustavo was playing it, and then you did some stuff, because I wasn't there. Yeah, just a couple little things. Whatever it was. But yes, Dave had something to do with it. He, I got it 90%, and he did the last 10%. Right. But it is a nice amp, yeah. Yeah, it was a great, great amp. Yeah. It was good. It was all Haybor Transformers. Yeah. Solid build. It was awesome. And it was just one time. I think they only made 25 of them, and that was it. Yeah. It was like a Sweetwater exclusive thing. So Limited run? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Here's, the, here's a question, Dave. You'll, you'll, you'll like this one. Uh-oh. Are there any mods to, to be done on a JCM 900? To make it sound good, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> well, you, you know, I could take it out front here and toss it in the <laughs> in the bin out here in, this, in what we call a skip bin. <laughs> yeah, skip bin out here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, not really. I mean, half of it's solid state, so it's, it's like, uh not really, man. I've only, really. I've only. I mean, maybe I've some only, brief yeah. little. Like maybe this, yeah. things, you know, some could stuff you, to could you add a thump knob or, or depth knob? Yeah, sure, you could. Yeah, those are the many years where Marshall seems to kind of <laughs> lost <years>. their way <laughs> quite a few yeah. Many times. Yeah, they kind of went, they went, uh, you know, off the rails or whatever term you want to use. Uh, it's true. Far. Bruce and I, I, you know, I think I when I had Lyle on the on the channel and we had a chat. One of the someone asked the question, um, "What was the last great amp that Marshall put out?" And which Lyle answered, and he said, "The last vertical input JCM eight hundred 1983. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. and then things started to go. Think so, yeah. go well, they kept shape. adding more and more stuff. And you know, it's funny, the big companies like that, those are those are hired engineers. Like when you get a Friedman amp, Dave Friedman designed it. When you get your amp, you designed it. For a big company like Marshall or Fender, they hire an engineer or new engineers. One guy quits, a new guy comes in and says, oh, I can do all this. And they let them loose and that becomes a new line of stuff. You know, some of them are good and some aren't. And then they leave. Yeah. Somebody else comes in. You know, I look at all the crazy stuff Fender did all those years. And you look and you go, what the hell were they thinking? And it's just because, you know, a new engineer came in or whatever it was. And somebody else designed that line. So that's what happens. It's true of a lot of a lot of companies, I think, Bruce. Not just in the not just in our world of of musical instruments and so on. Yeah, any manufacturing. See, yeah, you see that a lot, right? Like the growth of a company, it gets to the point where it's it's probably lost the original founders or the original you know oh, yeah. person, and they just it just becomes a corporation putting stuff out. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, I've hit eight thousand subs on the on the stream. That's cool. cool. Happy about that. Um, where's the next question here, guys? I don't know. Where is it? I'm just. <laughs> here you go. Does Dave? Do you have a Klon, Dave? No. Why would I have a Klon? You a fan? I wish. I wish. I wish I would have had a Klon. I wish I had ten of them. Yeah, as an investment. <laughs> yeah, as an investment. Back when they were two hundred and seventy-five dollars or something. Back in the making music days, I could have uh -huh. bought a bunch of them, and that would have been great. Yeah, I have a friend here who has a couple of them, and I, I, I mean, said, whatever. I mean, he bought you know originals. He paid two hundred bucks oh, for them. Yeah. And I said, let me take one home and, and play it. And I took it home. It's like, I don't get it. <laughs> I, I said, I, you know, I turned up the gain and all. You know, I, I said, I couldn't really make it do what I thought it would do. And he goes, well, did you turn the gain up? I said, yeah. He goes, well, you can't. I go, what do you mean you can't? He goes, you don't use it for distortion. It's just magical. And you turn keep the gain down and turn the volume up and use it as a boost. Yeah, that's true. So that's I, how people use it. Okay. In front of a dirty amp. Didn't get it. Yeah, but, in front of know. our already crunchy amp. So yeah. yeah. I Plus, guess it did something. It's not worth eight thousand dollars, but you know. <laughs> None of these I, things I, there's so many things I wish. I mean, I I remember uh when I was a kid back at uh, Guitars for Stars. Yeah. Uh I mean seeing a bunch of you know early seventies Les Pauls for three hundred and fifty dollars all day long. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yep. oh well. I wish I wish you could just go with a pocket full of cash back mm -hmm. to back in time, go travel. Oh man, yeah, and then just so you know stuff. That would be great. Jared is asking: Is there any dream amp that you guys haven't built yet? Fuck. Interesting question. There's uh, plenty of stuff that I want to build that I haven't got to yet. Yeah, I don't know if I, I don't don't know. know dream amp, but certainly ideas. Yeah, I don't know if I'd call it a dream, but no. Every every, every new project is the dream amp. That's yeah. the, that's the thing. So so you know you come up with an idea, you run with it, and that's your dream at the time. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Yeah, that's, no, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's, into you a know, nightmare, Dave. Uh, you know, I wish it would be do this and would do that, and okay, let's make that. Okay, great. <laughs> this is where you get you can generate a lot of good ideas from from continuing to do mod work for people i think you know oh, oh yeah that's r d yeah all mod, all mod work is research and development yeah and they're paying for it so it's they're cool. paying for it yeah you get great <laughs> ideas out of that so you know you're on the bench and you're modding it and you're like i wonder if i do this what it'll sound like mm -hmm. oh no no i'm not going to do that ever again <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure what do we think of the vintage modern guys? So Ricky's asking, why is there all the hate for the vintage, the Marshall vintage modern? It can be. Know. It can be great. It can be good. I think they're a pretty if good place. Uh, if you bought it, <laughs> I can't remember the last time I saw one. It's been a long time. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there's some things you can do to it that were relatively simple. I, I did one for someone that was, uh, and I showed Jason or told Jason about it. I think he did one, right? Yeah, I did one based on what you told me, yeah. And, um, you know, there's an interesting thing. It's a really easy amp to work on, actually, because the way they laid it out actually made sense. Crazy. Imagine and, that. And the, <laughs> you know, the board you can take the whole preamp out, board out real simple. You can take yeah, the power amp tube board really simple. There was not hard. Pops out. It all, you know, plugs together. Mm. And, uh, and, Unlike any other Marshall. Right. So how it was designed was good. Now there's a couple things that were horrible about it. That the effects loop they did is just simply awful. <laughs> it just is terrible. And also there is a weird thing, and you find this out as you mod it. It's a weird thing with the, they have a reverb circuit and there's a, a digital reverb board. And if it ties in, there's a, like a ground loop somewhere there. And it's always there. 
it's just you don't hear it because generally your your the original post phase master is down really low. Yes. You don't really hear it. If you change that post phase master to a normal master and start modding the front end a little bit, all of a sudden you're like, well, when this reverb power supply is connected to the thing, it makes this hum. Oh. <laughs> so I always say, I you, well, I here's the you thing. Me that. You got to replace the loop. You're going to lose the reverb. We're going to put a little, in place of your reverb, you're going to get a depth knob or something, you know. If you do all that stuff, it'll quiet right down and it'll be great. Now, that amp has a parallel gain stage in it, doesn't it, Dave? Yes. In well, no. No, no, no. It, 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 it parallels the inputs. So there's like, in that amp, there's like a treble, shall we say, a treble channel and a bass channel like an old Marshall has. And then they put a gain stage. Well, no. The next gain stage is paralleled that they add, isn't it? I, I it's somewhere remember. in the middle. It's not the first stage like what you might yeah, see. So, so basically they take a, parallel the inputs, take a bass channel and a treble channel, roughly, some different parts, and they blend into another tube. The gain stage is there. So they have the two blended stages into the, another gain stage. Which actually works kind of neat, uh, because you can you can do like an old super lead Marshall where you can blend in the bass channel a little bit with the treble channel, but then you're going into another gain stage. Yeah. So so you have that kind of blend thing on the front end. The the yeah, concept was a good idea. They just implemented it poorly. I think it's a pretty pretty cool lamp. I mean, you know, it's not one of the classics, but I think it's yeah. okay. You can get them for um, nothing, and you can mod them to be yeah, great. good mod, good mod platform. So even get one and send it to a modder, and they'll do something with it. Um, send it to Dave um, or Shay. Shay's done some mods on the vintage modern as well. Yeah. Uh, question here from Maxi Raider: Dave, did you ever meet Jose Arredondo? Yeah, when I moved uh, when I moved to LA when I was a kid, I had an amp modified. By him instantly. Nice. And uh, a plexi, actually, that I had. A black flag plexi. <laughs> oh, no. Man. <laughs> under why. Imagine yeah. what that'd be worth now. Yeah, I know. I don't want to think about it. Anyway, no um, worry about it. And uh, he, was a, he was an awesome, awesome guy. Didn't play guitar. Really interesting. Yeah. At all. He had a guitar in the wall, and he would literally open the volume and hit it with his hand. <laughs> and he could tell what it sounded like when he hit it with his hand. That's amazing. I don't understand how, but I think he re really relied on people's input. Yeah, I was going to say that. You, know? you have to rely on players. And I, mean, I, and, I, and, and I think, you know, looking back at all these amps I've worked on from him, he was, I mean, although a little archaic in some pieces of it, um, he was really ahead of his time on, 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 on what became the norm, you know, later. Uh, I mean, you know, the basic architecture of it is very similar to what we all do. Yeah. You know, and, he, and, yeah. and, and he developed some stuff that was way like, where did that come from? I didn't see that anywhere and I never saw it after either, you know, and it, it, it's, he was probably at the time was the best at what he did out here, you know. It's certainly a, a a mod that's or a style that's stood the test of time, hasn't it? You know. Yeah, heads and tails above the Lee Jackson stuff that was going on. Yeah, I mean, which never sounded great. Any any comment on the second part of this question, Dave? This this question's been asked many many His, many, amps, many weren't, times. his amps weren't modded. Yeah. We all know that story, right? And I'm sorry, I've been in, I don't know, a dozen of amps that were used. Uh, you know, you, you've seen the pictures of that wood marshal that he had, too, the yes. with no Colex and stuff. Yeah. And I've been in that with stock. Uh, I've been in a bunch of the JMPs that you saw, like, or input JMPs you saw, like, 
from uh, the Japan tour or something. Yeah, yeah, that rig, you know, yeah. you know, a bunch of stuff. Other than a slight value here or there that was different, bearing amps, they were stock. A lot of them had updated impedance selectors and and things like that to make them more bulletproof because you know those old Marshall impedance selectors that just pushed in, not the most. <laughs> bulletproof thing in the no, world no. you know a Full lot of, a lot of amps were fried when they were falling out you know especially if you're moving those amps around right those things get knocked yeah. and they come out all that he had stuff. these big gnarly like industrial like uh impedance selectors which you can't get today of course to save your life you can't get them today um <laughs> uh, that were awesome you know it was a big industrial rotary switch. Uh, yeah, hard, hard. I mean, hard to explain, but they were they were like a huge square block on the back, and like you know, big amperage and stuff. Nothing was ever going to happen to those. You know, cool. I saw that in a lot of amps. Super chat here from Doug. Thanks, man. Um, thanks again, Jason Dave, for voicing tips on my eighty-seven X reissue. That must have been from a previous stream. I'm assuming, Dave. Uh, played today, and it's fantastic. Great show, thanks, man. Awesome. Uh, what else? What else we got here, guys? Um, <laughs> just, you know, I'm just going to put this up there for a second, Dave, while I'm looking for the next question. <laughs> I have this. I have this for you right here. <laughs> um, i routinely get that asked i know time. i wanted to put that one up there man i knew you'd love it <laughs> brian s guitars is asking thanks for the super chat too brian um does dave have a favorite amp to speak a cable he likes the best i have it you know i training. actually do although this is from years ago and i don't remember the actual model number so uh, years ago, I did. We did, we used to do a lot. You remember Dave Marshall, right? Yeah. We 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 used to do uh, a lot of cable testing and speaker cable testing and different things. And you know, all the speaker cables filter things slightly differently. And there's slightly we got pretty anal retentive about it back then. <laughs> And there was a Belden speaker cable that I loved, like a gray jacketed old classic Belden that's been around since the 70s. That was great. And for the life of me, it's 992 nine, something, 90. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so I would have to go looking for it. If you really uh, want the answer to that, you can email me and I'll go look for the exact, exact <laughs> model of it. This question here from Shay. Um, when we live streamed a few weeks back, Dave brought up the, your mod, Bruce. Uh, we talked about this a bit earlier, Shay. I think this was the. Yeah. Yeah. Which was. Um, well, uh, we think, talked about the history of it, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, we did, right? Really. Which is, I think you basically, it was the idea was kind of, Bruce, you've explained it as coming from players who were putting SD1s or OD1s or whatever in front of their in front of the right hundreds yeah yeah you guys have the schematic right of the mod yeah 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 well we he can it. get it from you we do i don't know where um I know. vintage city audio awesome being in the room tonight thanks for the super <laughs> chat man you must have a um, file cabinet full of schematics don't you who me yeah oh yeah, yeah. Like like paper printed of ones everything known to mankind well i used to the way you used to get schematics was write letters to the company yeah and then some would Hard. send you and some wouldn't and that's how you got stuff but yeah i've got like well nowadays i mean there's so much stuff out there but before everything was on the internet yeah i had like thousands of weird schematics not you just a, you, got a, you got a will you got a will that to me yeah <laughs> yes well, just come on you over nobody let, else is going to want it you know so. you can't let that 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 uh go to waste man that's yeah. going to be handed down through the generations yeah <laughs> oh, for sure um stormlight architect thanks for the super chat mate um 
Dave, still loving my JEL20 I bought a few weeks back. One problem, it's not loud enough. Are you doing a 50? What's next on the roadmap? We will see. Yeah. Could be. That normally means yes when you say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a no. You're not saying a no. You're just not allowed to bring out a 100. That's all. We will see. <laughs> Uh, um, here's a quick question. We're, 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 we're at two and a half hours, guys, so I'm, I'm, I'm respectful of your time. So we'll try, wow. and, I had no idea. We'll try and get yeah. through the, 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 <laughs> the end of this. It, it and, does go quickly. <clears throat> sure does. It does. And so, Bruce, I know it's getting late for you. So oh, yeah, um, It's only 1030. It's no big deal. That's, are, you, are, you, are you a late owl? Do you stay up late? Um, yeah. If I'm doing something, I can. If I'm in front of the TV, I'd already be asleep. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, as long as I'm moving around, I'm okay. <laughs> the, the, the Randy Rhodes amp, that mod, that's just the old one wire mod, wasn't it? The, this 1959 Randy Rhodes mod. Do you know what it was, Dave? Yeah, it was a one wire mod. It was just one, like one they mod. cascaded the bass channel into the treble channel or or vice versa um without changing any of the cathode setups or coupling or anything no, like that it was literally, literally just, like just cascaded one into the other didn't work very well <laughs> <laughs> as in randy Rhodes. yeah 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 uh, randy Rhodes. he had an odd sound anyway so it very yeah, that yeah. Some would say not a good sound. Although, Some although would say you know, that. a recorded tone was worse than <laughs> than live tone. It was hey, interesting. It was unique and it worked for him. You knew when it was him playing because the sound was so odd. So that's cool. <laughs> it's true, man. Um, a question here from T Top, and thanks for the super chat, uh, Dave. How different do you think? A 1997X with power station and a small box pedal sounds from a small box amp. Man, I mean, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> that seems like a lot of stuff to, to get what a small box amp does. You have you have a you have a power station and you have the 1987X and you have the small box pedal. I mean, you could just buy a small box. It, it tells it tells me that if you're running a 997 with a power station, you're probably driving that 87 really hard. So and the small box might be too much for it, actually. Exactly. Maybe the have you tried? Has anyone tried a small box pedal straight into a power station? Is it like a preamp in a box style? It's pedal? not exactly. It's really designed to go in front of an amp. But yeah, uh, okay. I, yeah, I don't, you know, how is it? I don't know. Could you, could you tweak the knobs till you got it to sound close? Probably. Yeah, sure. I mean, you can almost say that about anything, you know, it's just like, if you have an amp switcher and you're switching between two things, you can probably turn the knobs till it sounds very similar. I would suggest that you probably don't want to run the 1987X too hot if you're trying to emulate that sound, because the small box is, um, you, you're you still keeping the power section pretty clean in that amp, right, Dave? Like, Yeah, all, all the sounds are in the preamp. In the preamp, yeah. Um, you're not, you're not, I mean, unless you're playing it exceptionally loud, you're not, you're not yeah. getting anything from the power section. Exactly. Um, yeah, how can, a, how can a, a JJ 20, well, 20 watt amps are loud. I mean, they're not as loud as 100, but they're still pretty loud. Um, people are asking, Dave, when's the BE200 coming? <laughs> well, the JEL200, there you go. <laughs> so you're not allowed to do a 100. Uh, Man, know. I got to tell you, I, I have modified a couple Marshall Majors before. Have you? <laughs> Man. And uh, uh, just a couple. And I have to say, it is the most brutal sounding thing you've ever heard in your life. Yeah. It would just break. The walls want to come crumbling down around you. Oh, I can imagine. But in a really cool way. <laughs> just, just There's brutal. a certain uh, 
there's something about a 200 watts power section that has this man this um i don't even know how to say that this 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 low end girth yeah. punch that just nothing will have yeah nothing i had have. one a when, I was a, when i was a teenager i had a marshall major because you know they had a hundred and i said well no i need a 200 so i had <laughs> one sitting next to me yeah oh wow really <laughs> two four twelves with s with evsros in them oh shit yeah and <laughs> and uh of course it was just clean and unbelievably loud so i had a moss right fuzz pedal Oh man! And I can't imagine how horrible it actually sounded, but I loved it. It was cool, you know. It had to be brutal. I'm um, sure it was. Probably yeah. in a in a cool way, though. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, doubt it. I'm sure it was horrible, but you know. I haven't yeah. experienced that. I mean, I've experienced so. Someone I know here had a well, it's one of the diesel lamps. It's 180 watts or something. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. The, is it the Hagen or the, I don't know the the yeah the, the 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 hundred yeah the two, the hundred and fifty watt amp or something like that yeah and I've heard that through two four by twelves and you know we were playing amps loud in the room that day it was just one of those kind of gear fest things but when that when that came on I mean and it was distorted it wasn't set clean obviously but man it was like getting hit with a baseball bat <laughs> just uh, like know. getting hit by a car. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I have, a, I have an interesting story from when I was younger, because everybody, you know, it's always that question, is 20 watts enough to play with my band or whatever? You know, it always seems to be, is 20 watts enough? And nowadays it seems to be. Everybody goes, oh, yeah, 20 watts is plenty loud. I remember the first amp I ever modified for my own use I took a Fender Deluxe and I hot rotted one channel and put channel switching in it. So now and left the other channel clean. And I even put an EV, wasn't an SRO, but I think an EVM force speaker in it. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it was a little more efficient or whatever. And it was great. You know, it's like this cool little combo is plenty loud at rehearsal. We were playing, we had a wedding band and that's what I was using. And when we rehearsed in the little, in our, you know, our basement at the house, it was wonderful. And when we went out to play, the first time I used it, it was a big, you know, big Greek wedding with 700 people. And they had a stage with a, you know, 20 foot ceiling above us. And I set my little amp on the floor and I turned it on and it's like, oh shit, my amp's not working. And I, because I was standing a little distance away and I walked over near it and it was working 20 watts was absolutely underpowered i could literally not hear it yeah we didn't mic anything we're a stupid little wedding band yeah sure 50 years ago so 20 watts is not always enough and i needed it to be a little loud and clean because we were a wedding band and it was totally underpowered just couldn't even i couldn't hear it I think if you're playing like in a scenario like that where you're like you're doing it the old way where you're just playing off the back line with and yeah. your amp's not mic'd and you gotta keep up with a loud drummer, twenty is yeah. kinda not enough. No. Yeah. Fifty you kinda need fifty for that scenario. If you're being mic'd, then fine, right? You can yeah. get away. Yeah, with it. but it's all just it's all bullshit. Come on. I Depends mean, on the music. I mean what's happening these day and ages is bullshit. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just fucking utter bullshit. Just take the fucking 100 Come on, watt amp. Just play the 50 with... watt amp and just. Come on. It's not that much bigger. Stop with, this. Stop with this. You know, oh, I can mix the band better if you have lower stage volume. And then you hear the mix and it's utter crap. Yep. Come on. Yeah, this is better. Oh, yeah, yeah this is better. All right, sure. No. <laughs> It's well, never it's better. It, I've it, never it, once heard it be better. I'm sorry. <laughs> it no. It's well, in not. the amp class, we do a 20 and a 50. They're virtually oh. identical. You don't even know which one you're building except for the transformers and the power tubes. And you put them next to each other at, you know, normal kind of cranked up a little bit volume. I don't know. I defy anybody to tell the difference between the two amps. You can, can people do people choose Bruce whether they, they want to build the 20 or the 50 
I like them to build the 20 because I make more money on it. But <laughs> when they want to do, you know, and they'll ask me, which one should I build? And it's like, well, 20, 20. <laughs> you know, this is, you know, do the 20. I said, if, you know, and I tell them my little story about not having enough power in that one situation. You know, I said, if you're going to play outside with your rock band in the summer, uh, you know, you might want more power. I don't know. But it's not like one sounds American and one's British because it's, you know, 6v6 versus the L34. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of a thing. <clears throat> Can never have some... too much power. Like, really, you have a no, master well, volume, you turn it down. But once maybe, you run out of power, you're done. Maybe maybe 200 is probably a little bit of a luxury. 100 yeah. 100 good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Lyle saying that Randy Road circuit's pretty crap. Yeah, agree. Mm -hmm. um, this will uh, this will this will get people uh, in into gear. I love Randy's tone, says Scott, and um, go, Scotty goes on to say Ed's Ed's tone is all treble and ice picky too. There, I said it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Words, man. <laughs> and what's Randy? Uh, Fuzzy and mid rangey and weird. <laughs> kind of like Randy's tone. I mean, love love them as a player, but just f fuzzy, man. Like I don't know. No, but you know it's him. You do. You do. <laughs> this is the uh, people could talk about this shit all day, couldn't they? Um, <laughs> let's like see. At some of the comments in the in the in the chat, and I'm like, I'm I haven't been keeping up. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I think we are nearly. Read this, guys. Uh, Jesus, it was on God, forever. There's a lot more stuff that's just come in. Um, there you go, Dave. Someone's looking for a can I has a purple JEL 50? You start an order book. <laughs> can you? Well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. That's <laughs> we'll we'll see. Is is I'll translate for Dave means yes, but not now. <laughs> there you go. Maybe, maybe it depends. Um, hypothetically, what if they were all purple? There you go. <laughs> then you probably want something different at that point. Yeah, then he won't want purple. Fuck, fuck with everyone. <laughs> yeah, this is it. And uh, Ben here at Murray's guitar pickup. She's going to do a orange. orange. Do orange. Orange is cool. <laughs> I like orange. Orange head shell looks great. Yeah. Um, wish you luck. Yeah, a two two oh four is like uh, you know as a first build. I, I think and Marshall like with their numbers drives me crazy. Yeah, nineteen seventy four, two two oh four, two two oh three. Nine oh. forty one oh whatever. The, the, I'm like, and wait, the two two oh four is fifty watts, and the two two oh three is a hundred watts. Twenty two oh five. What? What? <laughs> well, yeah. I, I always, I always like go on the internet. I'm like, oh wait, so what's that? Someone asking? Oh, that amp. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The 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 shitty two channel one. Got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. The one that you don't want. But it's the always once we know on a mod. Old, the old circuits, the you know, the 1987, 1959. Uh, even people confuse those with year, like to the uninitiated who's just getting into kind of understanding marshals. I've seen this before. They'll they'll actually confuse it with the the year of manufacture. No. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of like you know, <laughs> nineteen eighty seven. You go, oh yeah, yes, okay. that. Well, guys, we yeah, be sure. my wife just texted me and go, oh, my God, you're going to go you? all night, aren't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow, look at that. This is the danger with these things. Yeah. Well, I want to thank, I thank you both for coming on. It's been, okay. it's been awesome to have you, have you here together. And, A um, pleasure. I still don't yeah. think we covered that much. No, I know. <laughs> oh, really? Did three hours. Yeah, I didn't cover that much. Yeah. 
Well, we'll have to do a. We'll do it again. We'll do a part two, and we will we'll yeah. see if we can tease out a few more of the old stories. I was going to say we didn't even tell any stories. Yeah, we <laughs> did. We told how Eggnetter start, sort of the the products started with the IE four. Yeah. But we didn't yeah, even it. go into much else. Yeah. We talked a bit about the, the Rockon and the modules, and the, and the modules. Yeah. Yeah, the module stuff. Yeah, we have I'm lots sure of good stories. Yeah. There'll be plenty. There'll be plenty more to talk about. We'll do, we'll do this again if you guys are up for it. So yeah, yeah, I'm in. All right, we got to do. We got to do one. Uh, I know Tracy's still here. We got to do yeah. one with Tracy too. Let's do that. Yeah. I'll make a note of that. Let's talk yep. about PC boards. Yes, <laughs> that would be no, for the geeky. Get real, get real stuff, geeky. Yeah. yeah, real <laughs> riveting subject. Huh? Riveting, <laughs> riveting to all of. 50 people maybe that will have <laughs> that will have an impact on the amount of people watching and i'm yeah I, I, yeah unfortunately that will be one that we yeah we'll just be in the stinker <laughs> hey but it'd be worth doing it'd yeah. be um yeah. it'd be worth doing anyway you will do that look someone's saying yeah that's a sexy topic man pcbs see there you go yeah let's do that for sure um all right, guys, you just hang on the hang on the stream for a second. We'll, yep. we'll hang up and and we'll. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, I am. We're back again, doing this again next week, and I'll uh, I'll let you know details of the stream and hit and the like before time. you go. Yeah, hit the like, subscribe. As just said. <laughs> <laughs> All that shit. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And Tracy's got the last comment. Oh, I've missed it. The stream just moved. Oh, there we go. This one. Make sure Lyle's there. <laughs> okay. Again, Lyle, Lyle can be on. It can be a four. It, it, wait. It can be a four way. <laughs> yeah. There totally. Yeah. Four yeah. four screens on. We can do that for sure. All right, guys. All uh, in the stream. Thanks for tuning in again.